What's up, guys? What is going on, guys? We are here in Raleigh, North Carolina for some more Dead or Alive Sick World Championship action. I'm Emery Reigns. Shay Swift, I always. We're about to kick this off with some really great matches for you guys. Obviously, there's another event going on as well in Paris, France. Um, but regardless, we're still here. we got some great players here for you guys, and they're going to put on a good show. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, this isn't Raleigh, North Carolina. This is TFC. This is still one of the active events that are a part of the World Championship. Yeah. And the players out here know it. They know that the points are on the line. They know that there's five slots open to be on that list of North American players to go out to Japan and compete. Right. And they know it's a tight race right now. So they're really out here competing really hard. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, again, just to shout out some of the players we got here, we got Black Moon Rising. There's actually so many things going on right now. We got Black Moon Rising. We got Matt Pond. We got Lucky Loops. We've got Rakuto. We've got all these great players here. Killy is coming back. And in a way to kind of geek keep a little bit, but also he wants that prize money on the line. So we're going to be jumping into it. I don't know if it's a button check. No, but it looks like they're going to okay, go straight so into it. It's, it's uh, Alan Paris versus Matt Pond. Yeah. So, again, we have Lucky Loops just waking up from a nap. Yes. <laughs> so he's literally just waking up from a nap, trying to jump in here and get some uh, get some matches on the screen for you guys. So Matt already starting off looking pretty dominant there. There's the 4-4 grab into the wall splat. Yeah, I mean, Alan Perez is definitely, or Lucky Loops, I should say, he's definitely going to have to wake up. Like you said, he is waking up from that nap. He drove straight from Atlanta, Georgia, eight hours after working a full shift. So uh, as we see, he's still executing his combos very nicely. Yeah. So it looks like the sleep that he got in between uh, getting here and, and starting up has helped, helped him out a little bit. And again, it looks like he's going for that uh, forward kick down kick because he doesn't feel confident in the close hit. I'm not sure after the bound there, but... It does extra damage. So it oh, depend okay. depending on if you get that uh, nine, 9K nine off, or not, I should say 7K off, yeah. if you, if you um, aren't using it as a combo extender but use it as a launcher, you could, you'd actually bounce the person higher so you can do a different ender. Right, okay. Uh, so Alan Paris getting, or Lucky Loops rather, getting the frame advantage there. Tries to go for a throw punish. I don't think it's that unsafe to go for that 12 frame throw there. So Matt's going to go ahead and get some momentum started here. Drops the combo. Nice. And Matt there, if, if he recognizes that string, because it's so unsafe, he can really, really do some damage to, to Lucky Loops. Right, all right, so this could here. do it. If he gets the splat out of the window, that is a dead character yes. all day. Yes, that yes, danger yes. zone actually does a lot of damage. So it's a it's a pretty even setup between them, yeah. between them right now. It's one round to one right now. And again, I want to point out the speed and uh, the speed that these characters possess. Both characters sitting on 11 frame, 9 frame jab, 11 yes. frame mid. You know, it's going to be a pretty even match as far as the, uh, the, the attacks trading at certain times. So there goes Lucky Loops. Is he going to use Big the meter? Time. I like it. Is he going to cancel it? Nice, nice break, break hold. hold. I'm not really sure if I would have went for the break hold in that situation because of the fact that he had no life if he would have got out of that anyway. So. It's true, it's true, but at the same time, every round counts, right? Exactly, yep. So he, wanted, he took the risk, didn't pay off that time, but I like the mindset that Matt came into this match with. Right. All right, so Matt Potton trying to get some pressure started here, but Lucky Loops fighting his way back in. Nice throw punish there. Yeah. I like it. Matt Potton, nice nice offense here. And even though he burned that meter in the last round, lost a round, he looks like he's going to take this round pretty comfortably. Yeah. And he's going to go into the next round, possibly, with a full bar. And again, we know Matt as a bass player, does. but yep. he obviously feels much better with Mai. In this speed matchup, he wants to be able to combat Lucky Loops as best way he can. So, of course, he's going to go with his fastest character here. And, and Lucky Loops has to be careful here. Oh. Ooh, that was such a good hole. That's a 50-50. Right, because he was going to yeah. take 40% because he's going out the window for yep. sure. Uh, so Lucky Loops, ooh, ooh, nice hole. what a hole. And that's Matt Potton's experience against the Kasumi, and I think that, ooh, ooh, he ate his meter. That's unfortunate because that was a low, so that's yeah. the reason why that happened. Uh, so Alan Pears or Lucky Loops sitting on almost a full bar. Can he make it happen? That is going to hurt. It's not going to kill, though. It's going to leave Lucky Loops about 10%. I'm surprised we didn't see a break uh, hold from, from Lucky Loops there. Okay, Lucky Loops, he's got his break blow. He's got a full meter. Matt Potton has to whiff. recognize it. Ooh, wow. If you die to a fan, that might be a terrible feeling. And he Ooh. got caught nice, free canceling. Nice, 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 nice. From wow. Matt Pond there. Okay, so. Lucky you Loops know, has to wake up, number one. I want to point this out. You know, Matt, since this game has come out, we've known him to be more of a Maya player than a Bass player. For sure. He has looked so good with this character since the release of this game. He's Absolutely. Definitely a dangerous guy. I mean, he's contender to make top eight at this tournament for sure. And, and I also think that Maya is throwing off uh, Lucky Loops a little bit. Because I, I don't think he, he's expecting this fight. Because when you're when you're a Kasumi player and you're playing Mai, it's it's more of a brawl. Yeah, she matches for, sure. for speed. Drop combo there on two. And as I'm well. surprised he dropped that. Is that the no timing combo or three three beat? Mm, that's not a no time hit combo. You gotta you gotta, you have gotta time that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice hold. Again, Matt is so good at get. That's a straight up 50 50. Yeah. Do you and have time to do back kick free cancel throw? Does that work or no? You don't think he can. Time? You can. You do have time. Ooh, so so that's okay. that's the evolution of a lot of Kasumi players are starting to do is they free cancel to try and do a throw. Yeah. yeah. But I mean the, the you know even still it's Matt Pond is just on point with this yeah, exactly. Hold moment. Uh, so Lucky Loops already got a round on the board here against Matt. Again, this Ooh. is a first to two. We are in full play here in the winners bracket. So here's the bound. He's gonna use the meter. I love it. And we're seeing more and more players using that meter. Yep. Ooh. 
You just have to get with Lucky Loops about that close hit on the wall, the H plus KK. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> sure, I mean, it's, a, it's a two on one, but maybe he was just looking to fish out something from yeah. that pot and make him waste some meter or something. Ooh, and Ooh, can't guess it there. That's right. And that's going to be a 50 50 every time. I mean, that's a dangerous thing to, to put on the screen Ooh. as a Kasumi player because you're living and dying by a 50 50. Right. So again, we see Matt doing a good job right now trying to get back in this, but Lucky Loops has got all the momentum right now. Nice throw punish from the forward punch punch. Recognize Beautiful recognition. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Nice. Nice cancel there. I don't think Matt was prepared for the uh, teleport Hoshifo there. Okay, nice nice punishment. Crouch, and that's going to be a punish. It's not over yet, though. There's the plus frames, and he's and dead. Lucky Loops waking up. Yeah, man. No cares in the world saying, I'm burning all my meter, and then I'm going to do the classic throw because I don't think you're going to press a button. Do you think that the more closed in map helped him out in that situation because obviously the APO stage is a little more open. They can definitely. watch each other across the map. They definitely you got did. the danger zone. This is a straight out brawl right now. It, there was no room for, for Matt to really maneuver or get away and I think that definitely played a part into uh, Lucky Loops' advantages right. there. But this map right here, much more open space. Um, so we'll see what happens in, yeah. in this game three. Alright, so Lucky Loops starting his offense already, getting the jabs on the screen and there's the wall splat. No, such a hard move to hold. And he's nice not combo. Oh, that did a lot. Looking for a sidestep there. Got caught. Matt Potton. Whoa! Ooh, nice crush of the sidestep attack, and that's what Mai can do against yeah. characters like Kasumi. Oh, he tried to go for the... They actually nerfed that. Yep. She used to be able to do that. They changed it. Again, we're not seeing Lucky nice. Loops Ooh. counter that forward punch kick, kick too much, and Matt Potton is getting a lot of pressure off of that. That was a nice close hit. Oh, he's dead. Wow. Good, he's dead. good read there on the low, the low uh, wake-up kick. I saw again at the beginning of the game, whoever gets that first strike, it's a straight gamble. I got a nine frame jab, I have one too. I've got the 11 frame mid, I've got one too. It's a straight up gamble. So whoever gets that attack in there is just guessing right every time. Yeah. And one thing one thing we you do need to see from, from Lucky Loops is a little bit more mix up from his offense. It looks like he's trying to start a lot of things with 6B, 6BK. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to see him get some more, um, you know, standing jabs. Yeah, throw some jabs some in there. Mix up with that punch, punch, down, back, kick, get that 50 50 going. If you get hit by a down back kick, it's a 50-50. Yeah. Are you getting 12 frame grab, launch in the air, you're gonna get mm. stunned, what's it gonna be? This and that's not good. almost a dead character. Oh, a dead that character. did a lot. So Lucky Loops on his last legs yeah, this in game is it. three here. If he doesn't make something happen, he's got the meter, he can do something, but Matt is running away with this. There's the yeah. close hit. And again, you saw at the beginning of that round, he beat out the 6BK again with the standing kick. Okay, so Lucky Loops looking really stiff, more Ooh, stiff nice than I'm defense used to seeing from Matt Hunt. That's unsafe, and he didn't go for the right punish there. He's working on a great. There okay, it is. Nice, uh, different uh, strength uh, uh, there. Uh, uh. Threw him off. Okay, goes for the DOA 4 combo. All right. Oh, and he oh, blocks defense. it. He's not dead. One more hit. And oh, that is a him. dead character. Caught him. Really caught him good slipping. stuff. You know, Alan Paris, or Lucky Loops, rather, was just woke up from a nap. So I'm not sure if that affected him, but that is definitely not the ready. Lucky Loops that we're used to you seeing. You gotta be ready, at all. man. You gotta, you gotta come to these tournaments ready. For he sure. wasn't ready at the time. So Matt Pond moving on in the bracket. I know that's the very first match so that he's yeah. going out to possibly a top 16 next. Yeah. I mean, again, we've seen Lucky Loops throughout this tour doing obviously very well. I would have to say that that was one of his performances that it was a little weaker than what we've seen, for sure. Definitely, definitely. But either I, way, I you know, um, we're gonna be moving on. Again, Lucky Loops is not out. He's gonna go to lose a bracket. And yep. again, you never, especially this early in the tournament, you don't want to be in loser bracket. So yep. he's going to have to fight his way out, and there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to be able to do that because he's a very talented player. So Absolutely. hopefully he wakes up, hopefully he shakes off the cobwebs, and he, he's able to fight back. But we're going to be moving on in the bracket here. I don't know who we're going to have next, but either way, guys, you are watching DOA 6 World Championship action here at TFC. And again, this is going to be a great event. Yes, definitely. No, no question, no question. Um, I, I'm curious who we're going to have next on the stream, though. Yeah. I have no idea what is going on right now, but either way, uh, make sure you guys are keeping up with the standings. So we're getting to the point where we're coming very close to the end of the tour here. So, you know, you want to keep up with the standings on the website to be able to see where everybody's placing. There's a lot of people fighting for these spots right now. You've got Rakuto down there. You've got E-Man. You've got the people who are pretty much not guaranteed to go. Hoodless. Black Bear. Yeah, Black Bear as well. You've got Hoodless. You've got Calderblade. You've got Killy. All these people who are pretty much guaranteed to go at this point, but yes. that leaves four other spots, you know no what question. I mean? Yeah, no four question. other spots, so these guys got to come out. You know, obviously TFC is going on right now, but ECT is another uh, chance to be able to earn some points on the board. Yeah, and, and so it looks like we have B-Boy Dragon on the, the right side there. Yeah. And we'll see. I'm not sure who this is that's going to be on the screen. I'm not sure, but we're going to find out. Again, there's a lot of people at this tournament that we may not know by their local, face. Local North Carolina players, so, so they got to show up, right? Yeah. 
there's a lot of people at this tournament that we may not know by their face, but we might know by their name. And there's been tons of those players that I've seen so far. We got Stranger in my tub here. He's actually a PC player I play with a lot. Yep. And he's here as well. So there's a lot of guys here, man. Shin Lad that, you know, they're just actually starting to come out. And it's always good to see that. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice to just see, like, each, each of these events, you get to see who the local players are that typically won't travel across the country. Right. But if it's something in their backyard, they're, they're, they're more than happy to come out and support. So they give themselves a chance to compete at the highest level. Right. And, and we again, get to kind of see what, they, what, what their brand of DOA looks like. We've got B-Boy here. So let's talk about B-Boy for a second. B-Boy is that old school player. And, you know, he's been around for a long time, since DOA 2U from as far as I can remember. He's been around for a long time, and he's always been that player that has just never really been able to just completely dominate everybody, especially yes. for somebody who's been around at that point. I feel like everybody's had their time. So, you know, B-Boy came here. He said that he came here because he looked at the bracket for this tournament and said, I have a better shot because we know B-Boy to always go overseas and to go uh, play at other foreign events, obviously. So it's surprising to not, not see him in France, but he's here because he looked at the bracket and he said, I have a better chance of coming here and playing well and getting these points. So we're going to see if he can do it. He's going to pull out the Nico here. I love this costume, by the way. That was awesome. It's just the awesome. color coordination with her hair it just looks sick. Okay. It's pretty awesome. It's like she's a female sub zero almost. And we did. We see Nice Zero at KIT. Yeah. So that's actually the second time we've seen him. And again, I want to talk about the stage for a second. There's been a lot of changes to this stage, as well as the danger zone. There's a lot of things that they changed. So uh, hopefully, we're going to be able to see B Boy or Big Night combos. Zero pull it off. There it is. Ooh. Oh, he dropped that combo, but still takes a round there. So good, good strong showing in the first round from B Boy. Right. And they're starting on that fireworks. And we know big time combos can still occur, even though they've made some changes to the stages. Again, and I'm remembering, as I'm What's seeing Night Zero play, I'm remembering that he knows what he's doing. If he doesn't use meter, that's mm. not going to feel good. Does he have a combo? Oh, and he doesn't um, know. He doesn't didn't know. know. Didn't recognize it, but that's okay. I mean, he's still got a little bit of damage off. He's still got some pressure. He's putting him into the wall. Nice hold from Night Zero. Nice. He gets the low kick, wake up kick on the stun there. Nice. He doesn't hold. And I don't think Night Zero knows either. Ooh, he's still got some good damage off that. Solid though. damage. And that's so, going to take the round. So. One thing I want to point out, uh, Nico is going to win the exchanges in this matchup as far as her speed. Tomi has a 13 frame mid, and uh, her forward kick is 12, I believe. They buffed it in this game. So she can combat her a little bit with that, but not really as much because I want to see Night Zero using the parry. I want to see him using the punch parry. Yeah, I mean, it, it would definitely help him out. I mean, B-Boy is known for, for starting his matches off with uh, punches yeah. in that sense. So it would definitely help him if he were to start utilizing that. Or even in the mid middle of strings, like you're seeing here, Punch Perry would definitely help him out. But as I say that, he put a nice side step on the screen, gets the Citizen Assist, looks for that high counter throw, misses yeah. it. And B-Boy is in a position to use some meter if he can get another stun on the screen. And he's got his back to the wall, but Night Zero fighting his way out. He goes for the, that's safe. Oh, mm. beautiful way to close that out. So, you know, Night Zero, it looked like he recognized, even though his quarter circle forward kick whiffed, he still recognized that it was safe, and he knew B-Boy was going to try to throw him, and it paid yeah. off right there. So, uh, so Night Zero still in this, but B-Boy, ooh, what a hold. And B-Boy's offense is looking like he's just trying to, to fish out a nice quick launch like there that. Is. That's what we're waiting damage. to see right there. And he's going to get the boxes, and he is there. Yeah, he's dead. Should be a dead character. Oh, yeah, he's dead. And I will say this. Nico takes advantage of this stage the Very way well. it is currently. So the reason why, Nico can relaunch you and relaunch you and still ground splash you yep. into a bound. Yep, she without takes advantage using the, of the stage. Yeah. yeah, She takes advantage of the stage a lot better than most characters do. So. Absolutely. So right. Night Zero, I mean, part of it was, may have been the stage where he lost tons of life. Yeah. But at the same time, like we said before, you know, if we could see him start using that punch parry at the start of these rounds, especially, it'll put him in a position to at least be at advantage. And that's what he really needs to get started anything. Man, B-Boy is just looking so dominant in this matchup, but you can't count Night Zero out. We've seen yeah. that he knows what he's doing, so maybe he can bring this back, but B-Boy is just on fire. Look at yeah. him. Yeah, B-Boy's on the buttons. Oh, he's firing away, man. He just used the meter right there, too. That was crazy. One thing that Night Zero needs to recognize is that B-Boy is low holding out of almost every stun. Absolutely. Nice, nice 3-3-T three, three from Night Zero there. Oh, and he just gets hit by the wake-up kick. Again, you know, it's easy as a commentator to be able to look at what a certain player is doing. But as a player, you've got to recognize it. Look, this guy is low counting out of every one of my stuns. I need to check him with some safe throws. I need to throw out some mids in there. Again, we just saw him punish the low, uh, the low hold with that up forward kick there. So he's finally recognizing it. All right, there's the wall spat again. Nice combo there by Knight Zero. Ooh. And nice 3 t from Knight Zero. Puts himself on the board with a point. Again, Night Zero is going in there, getting that stun with a with a, a standing P, so it's, so it's a little bit longer than normal stuns, and he's getting that nice launcher after a delay. Good, good setup for his offense. 
That move is actually safe, I believe. That's one of those Nico moves you don't see that much. Right. That little spinning twirl and kick, you don't see it that much. But that's that's part of the, the B-Boy plan, is to play a little unorthodox, right? To throw his opponent off. Right. Ooh. I think right there, Night Zero gave a little too much respect to the possible follow-up. And so he wasn't able to uh, take that or capitalize on the, the weakness there in right. the free cancel. Uh, so there's the down for down for a throw there by Night Zero trying to get something started. There's the 4 4 8 plus K. Definitely. All right, there's a sweep. And we see B Boy literally breaking this man's ankles right now. And yeah. that is going to nice hurt. Nice launcher. No one B Boy is going to use the meter right here. No, he saves it. Okay, Jay nice. 30%. It. Ooh, well, that's get off smart me. choice from Night Zero. B Boy not willing to hold. Smart. So what that's going to do, if B-Boy hits him again, it's game over. B-Boy needs to get one more hit, but Night Zero is fighting back. No, catches and him stepping. I'm surprised we didn't see like a wake-up break blow from yeah. B-Boy. And again, really am. as this goes on, Night Zero is building his meter back up. And again, B-Boy is that player. As soon as he knows he's guaranteed damage, oh, why did he do oh, that? He missed it. I think he was trying to get the wall. Yeah. And he wasn't confident um, at the angle that he had, so he was trying to maneuver around it, but he wasn't able to do it. Yeah, you Either definitely way, don't have that time. He's 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 in a great position. Night Zero standing at about 12% life left. Again, Ooh. the low holes from this man are saving Ooh, him. Nice break hole from B-Boy. Uh, and no that's a low. Ouch. Yep. So really Night good Zero. set, though. Really good set regardless. I mean, I want to see Night Zero again. Obviously, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, but uh, B-Boy is a veteran player, okay? So, you know, it is what it is, man. We're going to see more of Night Zero ho later, hopefully. B-Boy is going to move on in the bracket here at TFC. Yes. And, uh, again, you know, we have a lot of great matches in store for you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the event. Definitely, definitely. I mean, we're going to have Rakuto next, and I think I'm not sure who the follow-up player is going to be. But, as we always know, Rakuto likes to put on a nice show yeah. for, the, for the crowd. And uh, I expect nothing less here today. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so we see people getting on deck to play. Again, you know, a lot of players, it seemed like they started, like, popping up out of the woodwork. Like, we yeah. just start. we seen B-Boy come out of nowhere. You know, Rakuto popped up. All these players are popping up. And honestly, I didn't think that there were going to be this many players here, to be honest with you guys. Absolutely. So that goes to show you they know what's on the line. They know they need these points. And they're going to show up and try to get them. That's just how it is. So. Absolutely. Yeah, man. All right, we're going to be setting up here again, um, you know, and again, it's, it's we're getting down to the end of the tour. It's very important for you guys to keep up with that. You guys want to know who's going to Japan. You guys want to know who's on that leaderboard, so make sure you guys check it out. You can actually check it out. Uh, they post updates on the Twitter page as well, so make sure you guys check out the Twitter page and the mm -hmm. official website because at this point, we're dwindling down to the last two U.S. events. Yes. So this is very important. This event is very important as well as ECT next month yes. or later in this month, actually. Yes. And Alan Paris just sitting over there. Yeah, Alan asleep. Paris, man, he is not feeling himself right now. I wish you guys could see him, but he is slumped. <laughs> like, man, slumped over there. It's crazy to me. All right, so we have Rakuto setting up. Rakuto, throughout this tour, has been trying his best to make something happen for himself. Bayman obviously suffered one of the biggest L's in DOA history in this game. No doubt. Uh, the character is definitely not as effective as he was in the previous iteration. There was a point where we all considered Bayman to be a top five character in DOA 5 because of Rakuto. So the fact that Rakuto uh, is struggling so much because of his character, he's literally not where he wants to be right now. Exactly. And again, we're talking about a player who dominated towards the end of DOA 5. He took the, uh, the, the, the EVO Grand Finals. He took that, and he also took the NEC Grand Finals the one year in 2017 or 2018. No, 2016, right? Yeah. yeah that's when he beat Calibre in the Grand Finals. So, you know, we're talking about a player here who was dominant in the past game, and now he's really struggling to try to make something happen. So hopefully he can pull it out. He needs these points. For sure, he needs these points bad. Definitely, definitely. I mean, if he gets these points... He punches himself a ticket to yeah, Tokyo. exactly. And that's the end game. That's what everyone at this point is trying to do. They're trying to punch that ticket to go to Tokyo because that's where it all matters. There's a lot of money on the line in Tokyo, so everyone is trying their best to get there. Yeah, no question. No question about it. Yeah. It looks like they're still trying to do some uh, setup. Yeah. Not sure exactly what's going on over there, but hopefully they can get things straightened out. If we're, if we're talking about top eight, though, who, who do you think is going to win this tournament overall? <laughs> Um, well, first, I want to call top eight. From just what I've seen so far about the, uh, the, the amount of players here and the certain players that are here, I think we're going to see Killian, uh, Killian top eight. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see Cyber in top eight. I think we're going to see Alan Paris somewhere in top eight. Black mm -hmm. Moon Rise. And I think we're going to see Rakuto in top eight. Uh, I think my boy Dre is going to pull it out and get top eight. Shout outs to uh, Black White Boy for coming back and trying to do his thing he right might, now. He might. You never know, man. Oh, we got MMA Boss here as well. I don't know. There's actually a pretty good amount of players here. So, oh, Virgin Knight as well. So we got Big Dean, who's obviously nobody you want to sleep on as well. So there's some good players here. Um, and, you know, again, here's you my, never here's, know what's going to happen. Here's my thing. I, I think we're going to see uh, Killy get challenged. 
You think so? I'm not saying I'm going to call an upset because that'd be crazy. Right. But I do think Cyber is one of the people that's here that plays with Killy all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know those players that you play with all the time, they just tend to know your tendencies a little bit more. Exactly. So it gives them a better opportunity to, to maybe, maybe possibly take you out. Right. But likewise, I mean, Killy also knows cyber tendencies, so, you know, you can go either way. But I, I do think we're going to see Killy get pushed. I don't think it's going to be an easy tournament for him. Yeah. At all. I mean, one thing about top eight. fighting your good friends is that you don't even have to necessarily be on that player's level to beat them. Right. You just know their tendencies. You know what they're going to do. Like, okay, I fight Killy all the time online. I know he does this right here. I know he likes to do that. Right. Usually that's enough to beat a player. It doesn't even have to be because you're better than him or worse. That really doesn't even matter. We've seen it happen before. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we might see, we might see an upset. I don't know what's going to happen. But uh, another thing that we haven't really talked about, Season Pass 3. I'm not sure we've been keeping up with that, but it was actually announced. So we're getting a season pass through. We're getting one new character, and there's actually going to be uh, first, I think the first pack coming out. They said Who do we think the new character is going to be? I don't know, man. I, every time I've tried to call it, I've been wrong. So I don't want to say. Everyone's saying Rachel, but I don't know if we're going to see Rachel this season. So I, I think we are going to see Rachel. And the you reason so? why I think so is because the person that's been telling us the characters that's been leaking it has been 100% right every time. You're correct. Because he's been data mining it. And apparently they're saying that they found her animations in the game. So if they yeah. found her animations in the game, we're probably going to see Rachel. So I'm not going against this man at all ever I'm, again. I'm hopeful that it's a new character, but I think what we're going to see is, a, is Rachel. I think that's what we're going to get. Rachel so, was a sick character. I really loved Rachel I as a character. I was not a fan of Rachel, and I'm going to tell you why. Because... She could backdash at light speed, but was super heavyweight. Right. That's my issue with it. Like, she had very fast movement for her to be that damn heavy. Yeah, like she was sure. a heavyweight character. That was just wild to me. But we also have Neo Tang who's doing the same thing on the screen these days. So you can't really, you know, say that as an, as a, as an advantage, a true advantage. So after speaking to Rakudo, he's gonna, and I don't know the other player, I'm sorry. But after speaking to Rakudo, he pretty much said that if he's going to go out, he's going to go out with the best he's got. So... I think for the majority of this tournament, we may see Hitomi, but I think we're going to see Bayman for the most part, especially no when you get into that top four area. He's going to be wanting to go with his guns because this guy, more than anyone here, needs these points right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, the interesting thing about Rakuto is the fact that he said the only thing he's missing is Bayman's 1P. As of right now, he believes that it is not currently functioning the way it should because on counter hit zero, and he thinks it should be advantage. Right. I tend to think so as well, but he doesn't have it in this match. We'll see what he can do regardless. And I'm already starting off with a nice high counter throw. And that's a good strong read from Rakuto in that sense. Big time damage. Sonic T Gamer is going to need to uh, yeah. pick up the sticks. Didn't look uh, like he was on the buttons that <laughs> My time. man Sonic <laughs> needs to look at the screen because that was an ass whooping. All right. So there's the 3P into the stun, and Rakuto is on fire right now against. And this is a bad matchup. Nico destroys Bayman. It's a bad matchup. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, that's safe. she typically does, but one of the things that she can't do is get big time damage on him because of the fact that he's heavyweight. Right. And if Bayman times those side steps, the tank rolls correctly, then, you know, Nico is put in a really bad spot. Right. And that's what Rakuto is most known for. And something that we're seeing right now, we're seeing Sonic nice TV parry. Gamer get some attacks on the screen because at this point he's got to do something. Yeah. Something's got to happen. And that's because it. Because Rakuto, obviously the slower character in his matchup, at a disadvantage. He's, nice he's got a complete disadvantage against Nico. Rakuto, again, knows the max damage combo is the fatal rush. There's that new running tank roll there, the sliding tank roll. And even though it's a little bit slower, you can typically see it. I mean, it's still one of those things that you have to respect. And if you don't, you get damage for yeah, it. For sure. Nice break hold. Ooh, Ooh, get off me. Oh, he's trying to do a that. high. Yes, uh, surprising, surprising choice there. Oh, that's because that's. Um, I don't think he's dead, but it's gonna hurt. Almost. It's gonna hurt. Almost. He's down to five percent right now. Nice whiff punish there by Sonic. He needs to get out of there and get his space. Ooh, plus that's frames and he parries. Oh Baby man. one of the one of the only characters, actually the only character with a parry that actually hurts you. Yeah, for yeah, and, and it's crazy because like the things that make Bayman weaker in this game are actually not the things that make Bayman the character he is. It's just stuff that he already has that they made worse. Yes. Yes. So Bayman losing those plus frames off of his throw breaks, that was huge for him. Especially him being as slow as he is. Why well, I think it's also like if you look at the overall system. If you had perfectly timed your throw, right, to continue in a combo throw, you couldn't break it in older yeah, DOA. So exactly. now it doesn't matter. You can, still can be broken. So right. I think that's really what's probably, if you ask Rakuto, like the thing he wants back the most, it'd probably be that. Yeah. 
because he was known for, you know, having almost unbreakable throws. Ooh, nice. So we see Sonic kicking up a little bit. That's unsafe. But Rakuto knew who's going to hit a button after it, and this exactly. could be it. If Sonic Gamer Ooh. does not break this, that is a dead Nico. Yes, oh, indeed. he's dead. He's got to work on his timing there. That grab does so much. So much damage. And on high <laughs> it's counter, man, always it's hurt. nuts. It's always hurt like that, too. All right, there's that 20% on the tank roll. It does so much damage for an offensive hole. It does. But that's kind of what Bayman needs. At that. And the one thing that Sonic TB Gamer has not been able to set up is his punch punch low kick that's that's leading into like that plus five, plus six situation. He has not been able to get a good oh setup there. Lord. It seems like Rakuto's had the uh, correct answer each time. All right, so there's nice that hold. high counter high hold that's going to do 35% on high counter. Wow. And Advanced Sonic Gamer hold. is getting all his limbs broken right now by Rakuto. Okay, so Sonic Gamer, Rakuto yeah, not missed blocking his feet. But Rakuto has, doesn't yeah, care about blocking his feet, character. and he just takes the round again. Yeah. So that he, he's moving on. That's two games, two very quick games. Yeah, that was, that was quick, And man. That was you can tell my man has some questions. He's like, listen, man. Yeah, how did you break my legs like that? <laughs> my back, legs, arms, yeah, that was neck, bad. everything is gone right now. But either way, I mean, it, we saw Sonic B Gamer looking like he knew a little bit of what he's doing. So I'm not sure if that was just a bad matchup for him because Bayman has the parries and the tank roll. But I think we're going to see him come back. And I think we're going to see him do a little better. I think it was just, I think it had that and also it's just a bad player matchup. Like yeah. that, that was a situation in which you have an advanced level player like Rakuto. Right. And it's your, it clearly was your first time playing against somebody like that who was very patient, knew, into, knew what options to put on the screen every right. time he was in stun. It's when you run into that sort of thing, it's like a brick wall, and you kind of just have to take it as, take it as it is, take yeah. it out for what it is, learn from it. Exactly. So hopefully we see him study this matchup and come back again stronger to fight uh, Rakuto next time. Because definitely the one thing I will say about Bayman is it's not really as much Bayman as it is the player matchup. Yes. Rakuto has a very distinct way of playing, and he's always kind of stuck to that. So hopefully he studies the matchup, comes back and be like, okay, this guy likes to do this here. He likes to low counter here, or he likes to tank roll here. So hopefully we see him study the matchup next time, and be able to come back. Because it doesn't look like he really knew how to fight uh, Bayman that well. Absolutely. So we're gonna be moving on here again in the bracket, guys. At TFC. Um, you know, I just don't know who we're going to see next, but either way, I mean, it's, it's been pretty awesome so far. And again, when we get to that top eight, it's going to be pretty much nonstop. Like, that top eight is, is going to be a brawl. These players, especially players like Rakuto, especially players like uh, Alan Paris, they know that they need these points in order to go to Japan at this point. And just a quick update for you, Alan Paris is indeed still slumped. Oh, no, no, that man, is, as much that man as is gone. <laughs> that man is gone at this point. He is... Honestly, I think the sleep is hurting him more than it's helping him right now. Yeah, I mean, to, so to, he should to have been playing some casuals right now. I think for sure. Seriously. Yeah, man. You know, because if if you are a person that's sleep, and then you have to go play immediately, you're still kind of groggy. Your thumbs probably don't even work correctly because yeah. you're still trying to wake exactly. up. You know. And you're obviously when you first wake up. You know, when you're like first waking up out of your sleep, a lot of people know that's one of the times in life where you're the most unaware of your surroundings. Yes. So you're gonna get up out of your sleep and go up here and try to fight my. It ain't gonna work. I'm telling you. So you need to be tough, playing, you need to be warming to up your hands and getting on the sticks, man, for sure, because you're going to get bopped. All it's right, we're moving do. on here again with some more. This is going to be a good one. Mm. It's going to be a good one. We got it, Cyber against Virgin Knight. It's, it's two, uh, two well-known players. It, it, Cyber is Cyber's my pick to actually make it to top three. Yeah. Uh, because I know I know Cyber had a disappointing match at, uh, what was it, C? No, Summer Jam? Summer Jam against, Summer Jam against uh, E-Man. E yeah. And he uh, actually took a game off of him, so yeah, he could have yeah, won either way. It was an interesting conversation because Cyber felt like the match was his, you know? Yeah. And the fact that, you know, that happened and he's, he can, he's remembering that and he thinks he's learned from that, that's a dangerous player. So I but don't know glasses. if the glasses are going to help him. See, see, we know, we know this about the glasses. Every time we someone know, puts glasses uh, on, oh, my god. Whenever goodness. a player puts on glasses, they take hands. So I think if Virgin Knight takes a game off of Cyber, the glasses will no longer be on his face. No, no question. No question. I think they're coming off. And they're red. So you know he's time. seeing red right now. He's not even seeing the colors that he's supposed to be seeing right now. Because you, you put your glasses on, and, and, it's, and it's a sign of disrespect to your opponent. Yeah, and then your opponent's like, going to be like, I'm you. going in on you. And then you take your glasses off, and you're down 0-1. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I I'll mean, tell you one thing. I've known Virgin Knight for a long time. Oh, glasses off. Glasses off. Oh, yeah, he took the There we down. go. He's not playing. <laughs> I've known Virgin Knight for a long time, and I'll tell you. That's a serious face on Cyber, actually. This is not a guy that you want to lose to. No, it's not. He, and he can beat you. That's what I'm saying. Virgin Knight is not somebody to sleep on. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to play Bayman. He's a Bayman veteran. So we're going to see. We have two Bayman players at this tournament. Yeah, no, no question. And he's going with the classic ninja costume. I love that costume. Cyber. Cyber starting off with all the pressure. That's an option select. And I, I love I love that from, from Cyber because 
a lot of players will try and bait out a high counter throw in yeah. that situation in the round one, game one. Cyber just like, I'm putting my offense on the screen. Stop it first. If you can't, I'm going to take this damage. So Good listen, I'm going to tell you them. something about um, Cyber's character in this matchup. Her forward forward kick is a tracking mid kick that's negative two on block, yeah. which means that his people's capable was 12 saw it too. which means he's going to beat out everything he does except uh, jab. So, you know, Virginite has to be very careful what he's doing. Cyber taking the first game with almost a half a life bar there. And like he's got to watch out for that 10 frame high jab there. Yeah, you got to tech in that situation. If you don't tech, then you're in trouble. Yep. Every likewise, time. likewise for Cyber too. Although I think that setup might have been a little guaranteed. Uh, both characters actually are some of the only characters in the game that can take advantage of option selects off of their air juggles. In this game. Yes. They took that away from a lot of characters. Ooh. Okay, I like so the choice. Just, uh, yeah, so so Virtuous Knight is, is playing Bayman the right way in, in that sense because Ooh. it's a straight 50 50. Okay. Ooh. So Virgin Knight getting on the board with one to one here, and he's teabagging. Right. What is going on with the teabags right now? Cyber is not happy about that one. Okay. Oh, he doesn't. Mm, that might, up have, that might have been an uh, input error. Ooh. Nice hole. Oh. There's the 10% there. Gets the forward forward kick and Cyber hitting buttons. There's that tracking forward forward kick. Stop throwing me. Uh -huh. Oh, and he's Virtuous going nice. gold. Got my boy Gold, Gold Knight that, on the that screen. That kind of evens up this round a little bit. Oh, that's a dead character almost. Nice, nice whip punishment Ooh, in this situation. Nice. Yep, smart play. Okay, so we saw Virgin Knight use all of his meter right there, and now he doesn't have any. Nice, gets the wall splat into the option select. But he's starting off this round very strong. Uh -huh. Cyber uh -huh. got caught uh -huh. pressing buttons there at disadvantage. So I'm just letting oh you know, I don't know if Cyber knows he's negative this right is there, but that very is an option select. Round. Yeah. Okay, Ooh, Virgin Knight Virg trying to close Virgil's this Knight out. Is, Virgil's Knight is doing his thing right now. Uh, people's Kate, uh, uh, 10 frames there. Nice advanced mid punch hole by Virgin Knight there. Uh, -huh. there's the gut stun. Nice option. Like Get said. slapped. And oh, smart play from Cyber. Kick. Ooh. And he catches him trying to take roll. Virgin Knight's in trouble. Oh, oh and he's trying to. And he's going to be mad about he's that. He's dead. Go hold. Go hold that. That's a mid punch hold if you want it. Free one too. So I'm gonna say this cyber, you couldn't have any more advantage right now. Full bar meter, half a life bar. What's he gonna do? Wake up, great blow. Yes. And that's what it is. Okay. Smart play. Smart play. And we see a little bit of blood come out of Bayman's face there. So we're not gonna see a character switch. This is Virgin Knight's character. I know he used to use a little bit of Christie in five. We're not gonna see a character switch. He's going right back in. I think he can pull this out, but Cyber is looking good right now, man. Yeah. Is is his is his online uh, tag Virgin Knight or is it Virtuous Knight? <laughs> I call him Virginate because that was his original name. <laughs> got you, I got you. I, I got to learn. I got to learn. I didn't know. Yeah, okay. That was his old name. But either way, I mean, he's he's been in this, right in it. Like, he's been fighting back against Cyber, holding his own. Yeah. And I okay. like the fact that he's been able to do so. And there's that 25% almost there on the throw there by Virgin, uh, Virtuous Knight, rather. Yeah, it's nice tank roll. roll. And that's going to play a huge uh, factor in this matchup. But the second punch of Neo Tank, Again, another punch, tank punch will usually hit it depending on when he does it. He's break gonna hold. throw him, and that's yep, it. That's I knew it. it. That is a dead bay man. Caught him with the break hold. Smart play. All right, Cyber going up one to nothing in the second game of the set here. Ooh. And he's got to stop telegraphing that uh, catch throw. That's unsafe. No punish. Nice ball. Oh. He's gonna go for the He's learning throw? that no. he's likes to use the mid kick uh, stun to extend it out before launching. But it doesn't matter. Oh, man. Still, Cyber is bopping this man. He didn't even do the combo right, right there. Didn't need to. Ending the second round the same way he did the first round. That's unsafe. Oh, catch him with the offensive foe. So maybe we're going to see Virgin Knight say, you know what? I don't know what's unsafe or not unsafe, but I need to use the throw. I need to use the offensive holds. Uh, get slapped. Uh, uh, get slapped. Oh, get out of here. Nice break low. And he was waiting. Cyber smartly not pressing buttons, looking to take this round, That's take the it. game, and Listen, also take the match. One thing that I want to tell you is that I never really realized until I just saw what just happened. Obviously, Cyber is a great player, but uh, Bayman definitely struggles against Neo Tingle. The forward forward kick tracking and being negative two on block is a huge huge factor in the Bayman match because Bayman is slow. He needs a tank roll. Yes. That forward forward kick is eating up that tank roll no every question. single time. And we just no saw question. that. So. Yeah, man. Really good match. Cyber, tough. again, Cyber is a pick to be in top three at this tournament. I, I would I would say. For sure. Yeah, but the one thing I one thing I didn't like from Cyber, though, just a little bit was like, and I was talking to him earlier, it's just, you are Cyber. Right. 
you're giving too much respect to your opponents. Yeah. Just go in. Exactly. Um, cause 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 Neo Tengu is one of those characters you have to make a lot of reads. But the thing is, most of the time, you're getting in your own head if you don't even know what your opponent's gonna do. Like if right. if, if if your opponent doesn't know Neo Tengu, there's no reason for you to try and make reads. Exactly. It's about just going in. Yeah. Just going in. And again, in. something we saw there, I'm not sure how much uh, matchup experience Cyber has with mm -hmm. Bayman, but look, he was look, playing look the matchup really, really well. So yeah. I don't know who he's been fighting, but he knows that matchup. There's a few Bayman players out there that, you know, don't come out offline, but they're they're definitely in the ranked matches, especially on PS4. So yeah. I'm, I'm not too surprised that we saw that knowledge from Cyber in that, right, exactly. in that situation. And again, you know, Neo Tango is one of those characters, obviously, we don't see that much. Yes. So whenever we do see the character, it, sometimes you see some things that are kind of new. And again, you don't see the character that much, so her forward forward kick being negative two on block against a slower character, that is huge. Because her yes. P plus K becomes 12 frames, which is still going to beat out any 12 frame mid. And yes. I, I believe it has crushing properties, I want to say. So yes. you're in trouble if you're not an 11 frame or 9 frame character. You're in big trouble against that character. Yes. Agreed. All right, so this is going to be good. This is going to be a great match. They can't what? Yeah, it's going to be a good match. So, so what we have right now is we're going to see Dre, Black Moon, Black White Boy, versus Black Moon Rising. Doing a quick button check first, though. And one thing we know about Black Moon Rising is the fact that he is a phenomenal Lee Fang player. Um, he's been consistent in throughout this entire World Championships, many, many top eights. The one thing he hasn't been able to do is crack into that, you know, top three category. I think given the, given the player pool at TFC, he has got a great chance to do that. And if he can, I mean, it puts him in a position for that, that actual Tokyo experience. Whereas with, we see with Black White Boy, uh, he's, he's a local Atlanta uh, player. He hasn't been able to come out to too many events, but... From what we've seen from him in the past at DOA 5 and some of the DOA 6 events, he's pretty solid. He's he's also been ranked, I think, as the number one Ayane online on PC, if I'm not mistaken. So this should be a good match between these two players. Both of them have their game face on right now. And if, if I had to call it, I, 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 right now I'd say it's going to be Black Moon Rising that takes the entire thing. But we'll see. We're on a good stage here. Nice open space, especially for the Ayane player. Nice break hold. Definitely wanted to get out of that situation. Good smart stuff from Blackwing Rising. And again, that's a, might be an input error, but either way, Dregmaster actually is Dregmaster because he's able to convert the combo. So he used to be known as Black White Boy, now he's Dregmaster. So it's good. Dreg Gamesta, I should say. Ooh, nice recognition of the catch throw. Looking to get some space, but still gets crushed. Good damage from Blackwing Rising here. And this, look, Dre, Dre looking for that, that high counter throw. Wasn't able to get it. Still looking to kind of seal out the round. Black Moon with great patience, and this should be a dead character. Smart, smart play from Black Moon Rising there, taking that first round of game one. And that's something that Dre is going to have to keep in mind throughout this match is the fact that Black Moon doesn't play any games. He's gonna, he's willing to take that hold. He's not gonna let you finish out an entire string. Nice sidestep. You need to get away from the wall there. And again, nice fuzzy from Black Moon. Still takes the damage, but still. It's a good sign when you're able to start buzzing your opponent's throw attempts. Ooh, a nice high, nice advanced hold. That was a great read. I don't know if that, like, that was an incredible read, actually. Either way, though, Dre back in it, down two rounds, but get some nice damage in this third round. And again, nice wall damage from Black and Rising. And this seems to be the theme of this particular match is the fact that Dre has been fighting away from the wall. He's got to get himself some space. And he's got to recognize when... Black Moon Rising wants to use his meter. Or hold. Ooh, nice, nice. Caught him with the one PK. And the nice standing. He should use a meter is. here. It's not gonna kill, but it's definitely going to. Ooh, it might no, no, it's not gonna kill. But it's definitely gonna put him in a position. And that was risky. He's still alive here though. Oh wow. And a lot of people don't know that's a mid-kick. Yeah, it's a mid-kick. Mid people kick aren't recognizing now. it. Everybody's getting caught by it. In exchange for it being a mid kick now, it no longer guard breaks though. Correct. So that Correct. is, but honestly, with the way the move is, especially because wake up kicks are getting beat out left and right, I would much rather it be a mid than a high, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, because it's a high guard break. You know what Absolutely. I mean? And this stage they're on right now, it's got a slip stun. Definitely favors both characters. They can do a lot of nasty setups on it. Nice defense from Blackman Rising, though, to prevent any sort of setup from Dre there. Ooh. And Dre Ooh. already learning his lesson, not finishing out the string, canceling it, getting that stun. Ooh, nice deep stun again. Just mistimed that throw. 
Ooh. Another deep stun. Is he going to get the tanker? He's not. But that's no, going to be not. a nice 25% there from Dre, though. And nice, nice Sabaki there. I like what we're seeing from Black He's He's playing very patient, just fighting his way away from the wall. Get over Lose there. the round, but still, <laughs> good play. Again, and that was high counter, and he got the wall. So that was going to do so much damage. And that's what, that's what I was saying earlier. Is that's the one thing that we've seen as a common theme. Ooh, he's going to get the tanker now. It's yeah. one player Does he got those, wall. though? Does he? Oh, oh, he did have a combo. That was weird. <laughs> very strange. Very strange very little weird combo. Little series of missed there. Combo. Ooh, but, stop whipping. Ooh. And I'm surprised we saw a break hole from Blackman Rising in that yeah. situation. So much life lost, but. So again, you know, this is the first of two. It looks like Dre is getting, guaranteed. That's guaranteed. You got to wow. hold that. Otherwise, you take damage. Ooh, that's and nice 660 though. there. So I think he's recognizing how defensive that Dre is being. He's throwing out those offensive holes. I'm going to tell you right card? now. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, he, he should got be these, dead. He's dead. Whoa. He should have this. Oh. And he does. What he takes that combo. round. combo. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's happened twice so far in this series of matches. Every time that Black Moon Rising has gone for that one PK option to that whiff punishment, Dre has put standing K on the screen. Yeah. It's reached and stunned. And that was the difference for that round. Right, so again, if he sends Black Moon to loser's bracket at this point, that would be a that would be an upset for, for sure. sure. Because Black Moon is one of those projected Ooh, players to mix be up in the there. top three. So Dre. Oh, a nice defense from Black Moon Rising. He's not falling for that string. Again, Black Moon Rising very good at having clutch moments, but Ooh. I don't know what's going on because Dre is putting hands on Black Moon. Nice, nice setup here. What's what's what are we gonna do? Oh, wow! I don't think he expected oh. that at all. All right, Black Moon trying to make something happen. Gets the high counter offensive hold there. So he's recognizing that he needs to stay away from him at this point. Gets yes, the lift stun. Absolutely. Oh, nice oh, break hold. Plus. That was smart, smart play. Black Moon sitting on full bar here. What's going to be the choice? Nice defense, plus three. And Ooh. he doesn't hold? Oh, my goodness. Man, and the crazy, spacing crazy. from Dre right now. Super impressive. That's safe. And that's not safe, no wow. punish. Wow, and both players pressing buttons there. Yo, that was crazy Black change of pressing a button after that. That was super risky. That's safe. Very smart play from Dre. Ooh, Ooh the nice spacing. And this could be bad. This could be big time damage. And he does. He finishes the combo. It's going to take him down uh, to about 35%. Uh, 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 uh. All these steps. <laughs> but it brings right. us to our favorite stage in the game, right? Where you get Ooh. big time damage. Wow. He's going to use the meter. There it is. There's the cancel. Uh, uh. Uh, 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 oh, he, he oh still gosh. gets it. And he still got it. Still no. got it. What a stage. What okay. A, two rounds. He's put himself in Is a really Dre good spot. Is about to upset against Black Moon Rising? Nice hold. Uh -huh. Black Moon Rising is still in this. Wow. Interesting. Oh. Oh, okay. I think Black Moon Rising has made a good adjustment Yeah, for here. sure. I love her fatal rush. That's sick. Oh, he gets hit. Oh. And, and Dre, he's looking, he's doing the flip. Ooh. I mean, I don't mind, I don't mind it, but that's, whoo. Oh, oh, okay. Got a nice, nice conversion there. Oh, nice what a side, side step. step. And that's risky to do against an Ayane player. Okay, we might see Black Moon bring it back. Oh, that's so crazy he went for that. Get over there. Got him to the, got him to the car. Oh. Okay, nice wake up shoulder there. Oh. Okay, it looks like Dre needs to adjust because Black Moon is looking crazy good right now. Yeah, and the other thing is... Oh, oh wow, he missed it. By that. He's just on buttons. He's on buttons right now. Dre is getting opened up. That's safe. And he oh. doesn't... Oh, wow. wow. Wow, okay. Wow, there's some input We're Coming down to the wire. So, Black Moon sitting on a full bar. Oh, nice side uh -huh. step. Had to do it, but now he has no meter. What's oh, going to be the play hit. here? Nice, nice, nice duck. duck. Both players very nervous here. Uh-oh. Oh, that was pretty That was an input the shoulder. Oh, catches him there. And you can definitely tell that Black Moon wants to press a button here. Wow, doesn't get the car like oh, he wanted. Oh, he got hit again. One more hit, and Black Moon is going to bring this back. Oh, oh next exchange. Oh, oh. oh my god. Is he dead? And he's, he's Oh, wow. I cannot believe wow. Wow. that that just happened. Wow. <laughs> what a freaking match, dude. Wow. Wow, so Bro. he got him He got him in between the invincibility frames and active frames of that break blow, and that's why he was launched. It's unfortunate because Black Moon Rising made the right choice. He just made it at the wrong time. And that goes to show you that if you come out to these tournaments, this Whoa. is the first time I've seen Dre, Dre in a.k.a. The world Black White Boy, 
in years. Yep. So for him to come out and beat a top five contender in the U.S. in the DOA Six World Championship like that, Definitely. that was impressive. Definitely. That was good impressive stuff. for Very sure. Very good stuff. Wow, I think he awesome. may have punched his ticket to top eight. We'll see. We'll see. A bit later. Dude, what a freaking Definitely top match. 16. Yeah, that was, that, was, Honestly, that was quality. that's what I'm talking about with DOA. That's why I love this game. You have to take quality. those risks. You have what to. he did by staying in Leifeng's face with Leifeng had access to a break blow. Yes. Leifeng had access to a sidestep, meet, uh, break hold, and shoulders, and parries, and you stayed in his face and hit him? That man had some cojones on him, for yeah. sure. There's no wow. question. There's he worked no for question. that. He worked for that. that. Was I know Black Moon quite the match. did not expect that to happen because this man was a top three contender for the tournament. Easy. That was quite the match. Wow. Oh, my gosh. What a great match. Okay. All right, so we're moving on here again. I'm going to be talking about that match all day. Yeah, I mean, that, that was, was crazy. That's been the best match we've seen all day. And again, you know, Dre is a veteran player. Yeah, He's no been question. around for a while. So, again, I always say it. The veteran players. I didn't players, think he was coming out on top yeah, of that one. I the did veteran not. players have a way because he was. It was crazy how the momentum shifted. He started off with complete control. Yeah. Black Moon shifted it all the way back. And then he ended up pulling it out. And that's why DOA is such a great game. Like, if you look at any other game out there, you always see the player who's dominating. Usually they take it. But it can go either way with DOA, and that's why this game is so exciting to watch. Yes, yes, no doubt about yeah. it. I mean, it's it's incredible stuff that we're witnessing from these players today. Yeah. That I mean, that was one of those things where you're just like, your heart is beating because you just don't know what you is going to happen. Gonna happen. And you could tell, like, the players themselves were nervous because Black Moon Rising was, was dropping combos and having input errors towards the end of those rounds. Yeah. Uh, so this is a winner's bracket match because Definitely. Matt ended up taking it. Alan Paris is sending him the loser bracket. CJ is actually using Ayane and CJ. There's a lot of Ayane on the screen at this yeah. tournament. Ayane's been... We got uh, Shin Lad. We got Black White Boy, a.k.a. Dre. We got a bunch of Ayane players. CJ? It's it's an interesting thing, too, because uh, Ayane's considered one of the best characters in the game. Yeah, for don't sure. She's solid. She's super solid. And I think that's been the case for Ayane for a long time. She's always been considered one of the best. You just don't see a lot of players using her. Nice yeah. wake up and break low. Ooh, ooh, doesn't ooh. use the uh -huh. meter. Uh huh. Will he regret that? Was that max damage for her in that situation? In that situation, I believe it was because of the floor. You get the extra floor damage. Gotcha. And but there's because no wall he nearby. didn't use the meter. Wait, what the what the combo is going on? Oh, I don't know. Okay, but so my took the round. That's yeah, what we do. Yeah, I still took it. So again, CJ is um a guy who's been around for a while. I want to, you know, Restless Tick. Have you ever heard of Restless Tick? Yes. That was him. That's CJ. Wow. Okay. So okay. Restless Tick is still around. He's still playing. So it's good stuff. It's good stuff. One thing we, we definitely uh, know that Matt wants to do is get away from the wall, which he does a great job of doing, getting a nice quick launcher here, uh, gets some damage uh -huh. on the screen. And he knows going for that air grab into the floor slam is going to give him that max damage right. behind the stage. Electric Again, floor. that's great character awareness from uh, Matt. Gets caught there. What's going to be the setup here? Mm, and smart play, smart patience from Matt. He had no reason to hold there. Waited out that throw. Least amount of damaging option. Oh, try to get a try to get a throw punish on that. Smart play from CJ to get out of that. CJ looking smart right here, keeping Matt kinda against the wall. And making sure he doesn't get hit by that fan. Trying to punish it. Nice hold either yeah, way. That was a beautiful high counter hold. And he got the floor too. That was yeah, so like he, he threw he threw out the uh, throw and then threw out an immediate mid-punch counter. Either way though, Matt's still in this. Doesn't bother giving CJ an opportunity to use any meter. Takes the damage from the break low. You see this again. That's like this is, a, this is a common theme. Nice nice changing of position from CJ. Going to have Matt against the wall. That's unsafe. No punish. And it, obviously you can tell that CJ does not have the matchup experience to fight Mai. Because he's not punishing any of Mai's unsafe things. Yeah. Like we saw the same thing with Alan Paris or Lucky Loops a little bit earlier. Yeah. Just not the timing for punishing Mai just isn't there. And it's definitely contributing to them losing rounds, as All well right. as getting hit by fans, too. All right, so Matt going up 2-1 to one in a first to two set here at TFC. Matt is really, and I'm talking to you, I'm telling you this, Matt has told me multiple times that he needs to win this event. He needs to win this event, or at least do well and land in the money, because he needs to get some money from this tournament. He's told me. Yeah, no, I mean, So that's what he's sense. fighting hard for, man. He is. And he's, a, he's in a great position. I mean, Matt is, is a, definitely a stronger player, and he's looking to close this particular game out. But as we say that, CJ, nice throw here. What is the setup? Is he going to use meter? I think he should. And I think he should is take he the gamble. Cancel it. Oh, wow. He should have went for that, that was wall. such a great time. Whoa. Okay. So him doing that flip actually saved his life right yeah, there. Yeah, it sure did. Wow. That's unfortunate. Oh, man. And Matt. 
Just knowing how to oh, use those man. my pokes to stay in your range. People underestimate Mai's down back kick range. It does it does a lot of it has a lot of range to it. So as you can see him chasing him down with that one move there. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Uh, so we're going to the road raid stage here. Again, Ayane always excelling and being able to keep her distance. Ayane struggles against characters that can close the distance against her. We need to see CJ staying away from that pot in the pretty much in this matchup and he's staying in his face. He doesn't have the speed. I love this. I love this part here. There's that, again, that low kick, wake up kick is going to stun you on the stage. He's dead. That pun, he's smart. Going to finish it. Take it round. Jeez, look at the damage, man. And my, you know, my is such a strong character in this game, but we don't see her that much. Okay, catch some crouching. He's going to use the meter. He's, and he misses the tanker. And again, what we're seeing from Matt is great interruptions of the strings, able to get some damage. He's not going to get the car that's going to take it to the transition stage, but he's still going to get a nice good chunk, take CJ down to about 50%. This next exchange, ooh, misses it just barely again. That's guaranteed. And beautiful way to just be patient right there yes. by Matt. Matt is up 2-1, to 1-0 one. Yes. One in this his set. His Mai just looks really strong against a lot yeah. of these players right now. And again, you know, Mai having access to that 11 frame mid, you know, obviously the highs don't matter too much in this matchup because yeah. Ayane is such a good uh, crushing character. But that forward punch is going to stop back punch every time. That's safe. That one's safe in this game. It was unsafe in 5, and they swapped the two around. Yeah. All right, there's that grab there. 15% by Matt. Jumps. Oh, 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 get out the air. Oh, oh, nice launch. This should kill if he can do it. Nice combo to close the round out. I think that was the, the second round we've seen CJ get in the set. Yeah. Nice launcher. And that's one thing that CJ has to be mindful of. Once he gets that stun, he needs to do quick launches. Ooh, it seems to be pretty hurt. effective against Matt. Is he going to get the boxes? No, he's going to turn them and not get the boxes. Oh, okay. Nice adjustment to that air combo there. Mm. A little anti-air. Nice. Catch so him. one thing I tell you. Wow, oh! what a hold. Such smart play from CJ. All right. So one thing I'm going to tell you is that Matt likes to try to press a lot of buttons with mine, and it looks like it's hurting him because he's not being patient. Yeah, I mean, the Ayane. openness of the stage, is, I think, is really what's hurting Matt right now because he's not okay, able to yeah. keep that pressure up like he wants to. And Matt has a long way to go before he gets a break blow. So if CJ can stun him and launch him oh, and break blow him, he's dead. Ooh. Okay, so Matt is going to work his way up to another bar here to get that break hold so he's not out of it. And it's interesting that Matt likes the uh, super launcher throw so much with her. Even on and that damage. is a dead character for sure. Yep. Okay. CJ taking so this to CJ game three. Fighting his way back in, and it looked like for a while there, CJ might have took an L. It looked yep. like Matt was running away, and again, Matt, is, they're both sitting in winner's bracket, so this could go either way right now. So Matt is thinking a little bit. And you know what? Honestly, I, I think in this case, if he went Bass, he'd have a successful time. Yeah, I think I think he would pull it off if he picked I Bass. think he might recognize it, but we'll see. Because again, when you're There's in this situation where you're at one to one, to CJ in this. when you're in a situation where the score is tied and you know one more game besides whether you move on or go down, I think that you should go with your guns regardless of whether it's a bad yep. matchup. This is it. his character. He is this character. He looks just well, like him. Well, I don't even know that it's going to be a bad matchup for him just based on how CJ has played. It's it's the fact that CJ has left himself open so much from throw punishment and yeah. seems very susceptible to a lot of lows. Right. If Matt can is going to execute that game plan, he has a great chance to make this a 3-0 situation. Exactly. All right, so we're on kind of an open stage, and there's no danger zone. So the only thing we have is the ball. And I, there oh. it is, right there. See, and, and I think that's why I think it's a good good selection for him. I didn't even think about that, but every time Ayane is in that, oh, nice, nice hold. hold. Every time Ayane is in that spinning, if she gets hit by 3K, she's getting put in a fatal spin. Yes. Every time. And there's nothing you can do about that. Good patience. And again, right here, that's the situation that Matt, I think, recognized is the fact that when I get this throw punishment, I don't think his, he doesn't think CJ's decisions are going to be sound. Oh. Wow, that was so risky to go for. Oh, not gonna kill. And but this is when Bass is in trouble. He cannot get in, but he has the life lead slightly though. And that was such a bad oh. move. Why Whiff, would Matt whiffy, whiff whiffy, that right whiffy, whiffy, man. This is the character you don't whiff against. Everyone, you do not whiff against an army ever. Punishment. Safe. There it is. It used to be another safe, one. Though. Another oh. one. He just lost all his life to the forward grab. Look at his life bar. Smart play from Matt, but again, Matt has to use the break hold. Didn't want to. I'm surprised. And there you uh, go. Oh, oh, and he doesn't and capitalize. Oh, nice. He's okay, he's dead. dead. He's dead. If he gets the option select, what's the, is he's he going to use meter? a break? Oh, Look at the defense. 
Wow, defense. Good, good okay, exchange, okay, good okay, exchange, okay. good exchange. Again, one to one. Both players sit on a full bar one round here, and CJ starting off the pressure. Very good play. And Matt, he's thinking too much on the ground, I think. He wants to get him closer for that wake-up kick, but CJ smartly just not letting himself That's, get involved. Oh, that. man, and that. CJ opening him up with the full string there. CJ not wanting to hold there. Ooh. Oh, and that Mistinded. was such a bad whiff. Oh, Yikes. and Matt is Matt being so impatient mistakes. right now. When you're playing a matchup of this caliber where you literally lose this matchup, you need to be playing more patient and slow. And right now, we see CJ literally running away with all the momentum right now. Oh, Ooh, get over here. Nice. Stop hitting buttons. Ooh. Nice. And Matt's fighting back here. And the one Matt thing is we, just doing attacks in the right places. Right. And But the one thing we haven't seen from Matt at all is any meter use. Yeah, no sidestep. No. Oh, there it is. That's so not going to kill, get right? get that down forward kick. No, he's not dead. Oh, oh he, he is. is dead. <laughs> Look at the damage without the wall. Everybody was like, wait, is he dead? Oh, okay. gets caught again. Two to two. This is a close set. Nice. Ooh. Nice throw. Oh, man. That was not a good option. The four people's K. Oh. There it is. Oh. What are we going to see? Oh. Guaranteed low throw. What's going to And that's happen? guaranteed. That's guaranteed. That's guaranteed. Option select. And that's a wow. hold the ball. Wow. Smart play. And Matt, the scientist. That was the scientist face there. Listen, I'm going to tell he you said, something. I had that. I got Matt that in the bag. couldn't have been any more fortunate than he was. So when Matt does the complete F5 throw there mm -hmm. and gets the guaranteed pickup, if your back is to the wall, that 6KP is guaranteed wow. every single time. Matt could have did 6KP into the meter and killed him straight up. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, no. He had options. Yeah, he had options. He had options. I think he right wanted to style it out with his unholdable. Yeah, and DOA, again, that's why I love this game. Like, the environment and where you are in the, in the stage, everything plays into an account. If Matt, I, I want to promise you this. If Matt didn't have that corner where he was, he probably would have lost that set. Yes, absolutely. Probably. That was so important from the half, his back to the wall right there. 100% agree. Yeah, man. Okay, so again, Matt is doing a great job. I want to say he's in top eight. I believe if I remember talking to him earlier, he said he needs to win two matches to get the top eight. Yes. So I want to say that that second match is beating CJ, sending the losers and sending him the top eight winners. Yes. Yeah, man. Okay. Let me move it on. Yin Crescent, my boy. Yo, Yin Crescent against, okay, so this guy here, Conditioner. I don't know if you know Conditioner, but he was a rig player in five. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's still rocking rig. He was using rig and Jan Lee. He doesn't really come out to many tournaments, but I believe he's a North Carolina native, so I believe that's why he's here. But um, Yin Crescent, he has an extensive background in fighting games. He's a very good Tekken player, uh, very good player at, uh, he plays Soul Calibur as well. That's his other game. So um, I know he was kind of deciding whether he wanted to enter this tournament or not, but I'm happy to see him because, you know, Coco is a character that's really good that we don't really see that much. Yes, indeed. Indeed, indeed, indeed. So we'll see. I mean, who, who do you think is going to win this then? I think based off of my experience fighting them and Ian Crescent's experience with fighting games, I think he's going to take this. Yeah. Probably 2-0, I think I want to call it. I think Conditioner is a great player, but I just don't think he has the offline experience or the experience with the game in general to be able to beat Ian Crescent. Ian Crescent maybe not play DOA 6 as much. Month one, he was all over the game, and then after that, he kind of like swayed away from it a little bit. But he just has he has a background with DOA in general. So. All right, so I think we're doing somewhat of a button check here. Um, yeah, because he does not use rig, so this is definitely a button check. Okay, I'm pretty sure we're going to see rig against Kofro. I think that's yeah. a matchup we're going to see, rig and Kofro. All right, yep, there it is. That's I just exactly called it gonna rig see. and Kokoro. And again, these ninja costumes are awesome. Are awesome. I'm so happy they brought them back. Like, they're sick. They're just great-looking costumes. They look good. Yeah, I mean, that that's what I will say is, like, sometimes I'm, I, I you know, I'm thinking, man, costumes, but... In this case, this costume pack, phenomenal. Yeah, great costume pack for sure. All right, so again, this stage, I like to call this the nowhere to run stage. Yeah, no. Literally, you, you can't run, you can't jump God, over so walls. This is all neutral right here. So whoever no, wins this has got the better here. neutral. And Conditioner, 15, got to do something because he took some major damage in the first six, seven seconds. And again, I'm telling you. You Yen don't Crescent run, you just take experience. damage. This looks crazy. Wow. <laughs> All right, Yen Crescent taking the first I was just people game. getting thrown into the wall the entire round. 40% of his life still left there. Nice, nice sidestep. Side That's unsafe. Nice punish there by Yen Crescent. Smart choice. That's unsafe. No Showed his back. What's he going to do? Oh! Still had the option for okay. it. Okay. Wow, Conditioner oh. doing the max damage. I like it. I didn't but know he Yen knew that. Crescent. Okay. Going gold. He just threw his meter. He just threw it out there. He said, forget it. 
That's plus. Tried to hit a button. All right, plus frames. Okay. And that's the one thing that, you know, Rick players are really happy about is the fact that Rick got more buffs. Wow. So, oh, he's dead. Oh, that's that character. So, with uh, with Kokoro's back throw, I want to call it, her back throw where she sends you backwards, yep. if you do anything but block right there, she's going to take your back every time. And yeah. I don't think Conditioner knows that. It's definitely a hard read, and it definitely got Yincrest in the round. And I like the fact that he made some hard read. Good grief, the damage. 13 seconds in, Yincrest is sitting on 25%. That's crazy. Yin Crescent getting himself away from the wall, getting back to the middle of the stage. Fortunately, he took Ooh. a kick to the face. Gonna take some damage here. So, one thing I wanna point out, Ooh, nice Conditioner, even though he lost that game, 3-0, Conditioner is doing all the new DOA 6 stuff that a lot of players are not doing, so he's been playing this game for sure, clearly, you can tell. Clearly, he's, he's a guy that, that knows his character. I just wanna know if we're gonna see a Jan Lee pick from Conditioner. Yeah, or we, if he's, we he's kinda thinking about it. It looks like he's thinking about it, and Yin is kinda like, it what doesn't you gonna matter, do, bro. What you gonna do? Like, what are you gonna do? What do you got for me at this point? Yin, and we're Yin, at the Yin looks confident. Screen. Yeah. And whatever he wants to do right now on the screen, that is the key about this. Okay. I don't know if Lila. <laughs> what are you gonna do, bro? Like, what are you gonna do? You going right back into it? All right. Yin Crescent yeah. having a blast right now. Yeah. So, right, so we see my man switching to his Sunday's best right now with the suit. Uh huh. Right, no close hit there. Didn't look like, like the damage though. Yin Crescent cared at all about the new costume. So one thing right there, uh, Yin Crescent. I'm, I'm sorry, Conditioner knows that that four punch 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 in this game is negative seven. Mm -hmm. That neutral throw is is crazy, and he has the knowledge to do that. Ooh, nice duck, but still gets hit. Hmm, not That's sure what he was plus. looking for there. Plus. Oh, that dust plus. It's crazy. Okay, he catches nice him, and time. that's going to do it. He's yeah. not going to hold that, yeah. All right, Yen Crescent looking good right now, Four man. straight Rolling rounds. Rolling up, one to nothing here. Ooh, again, and Crescent again. buttons. And I like the double dash there to bait out the hold. Wow, the reset. reset. That's so cheap. Oh, don't do it again. Conditioner said, I'm not oh, going to be man. conditioned that way. I might lose the round, but you're not going to get me that way. All right, Yen Crescent going up two to nothing on the Ooh. fireworks stays nice. Oh, okay, so again, conditioner caught on. He's like, I'm not holding the game. You're not gonna break. I'm not hitting the button. You're not breaking my back again. It's good stuff. Ooh. Nice high counter again. Yen Crescent just looking really strong. Oh my that god, my so back. Oh, plus frames. Nice, nice sidestep. Side. Can he bring it back? Let's see. He's around. Yen Crescent. Oh. Wow. Crawled towards him. Did three PP and call it a day. All right, Yen Crescent or coming over. Playing DOA again after such a long time and looking pretty damn good. To yeah, me. I would say he's looking good. I'm, I'm going to say that he's looking like a top eight contender right now. Uh, I believe so. I want to say so. I, I want to see him I want to see him get a little more challenge before I say that. Yeah, I don't know. See. I think right now we're going to see him in top eight. But either way, we still got a lot of tournaments yeah. to go. Um, yeah. I think we're going to see big game setting up. I'm not sure. I'm just looking over the players trying to give you guys an update on who I, we're going to see. I do see uh, Matt Ponton up there again. So Oh, he's up there again? Matt yeah. is up there again. So this will be his third match on the stream. So I I was wrong. I'm pretty sure Matt is gonna have to play another match to get to top eight. Yeah, yeah I pointed at Alan Paris there because he just woke up and uh, guess what? He's still sleepy. He looks sleepy. Look, he man, looks like a guy that, that doesn't want to make top eight right now. He's looking like a guy who was like, bro, to be honest with you, man, I don't care about top eight. I don't care about no money. I don't care bro, about no I, points. I'm I just here just to take. I don't care space. about it anymore. I don't care about Alan Paris anymore. Since you at this point, I don't. Alan Paris, don't. man, he's let me down, man. He, he let down the entire city of Atlanta, the entire state down. of Georgia, the entire East Coast, <laughs> the um, entire state. Yeah, I mean, basically at this point, like that's that's what he is right now. The he's entire failed. state. He's failed the South. Oh, AP, man. That's what it is. He's man. let down the whole state. Like it's crazy. Like it was. It was three people that came from Atlanta. Right. That we sat there. I, I we practiced Monday. We're like, "Yo, you're gonna make this mark, make this mark, make this mark." And Alan Perez, what's he do? First match, loser's bracket. Yep. Crazy to me. Crazy to me. Okay, so who do we have on deck? We have uh, Big Dean and Shinlad. And I'm just messing with Alan Perez, of course. So Shinlad, I'm not sure if you played him on PS4, but he's like, kind of like a ranked match, mo uh, ranked match monster. But definitely nobody to sleep on. Uh, Shinlad actually beat Stranger in my tub earlier. So, yeah, you know, um, you know, he's definitely not, this is Shinlai, actually his Shinlai's first. actually solid. No, he is. I want to say that he told me he's a Street Fighter player. This is his first DOA game that he's played. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the first one. Had, and he, he hasn't made top eight yet. Fast. No, he hasn't. So this could be his chance to do so. You're right. I mean, this this the top eight like could be at any given number of players, right? And I think he's from Canada, so. He's doing his thing coming all the way out here to play the game. Yeah, man. I mean, really it's, it's, it's interesting, like, 
what we're seeing from like a support standpoint because there's players from California, yeah, Canada here, and it's like what? Right. But I love it. I love the fact that we have these players out here doing their thing um, because it just shows the true love and support for the game. Exactly. And um, you know, Big Dean. Let's talk about him a little bit. This is a guy who doesn't just support DOA. Yeah. He supports the FTC as a whole. He uh, runs brackets for most events. He's literally playing his matches at multiple games in Tekken in this game. Yeah. Uh, Mortal Kombat, I believe he plays too. He's running brackets and playing in matches in between. So this man puts on a lot of work for the FTC in general. So shout out to Big Dean. Um, and, and he's definitely not somebody to sleep on. He's pretty damn solid at DOA too. We actually seen him beat Dr. Impact at Summer Jam. That was a big upset. For sure, because Dr. Impact is one of uh, uh, France's best players. Yes, definitely. No doubt. No doubt about it. And, um, you know, when we're talking about Europe in general, you know, you're, you're thinking Gahak Ball. But the other players there, like Dr. Impact, yeah. they're, 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 they're right up there. They're not on Gahak Ball's level, but they, they can do some damage yeah. if they get an opportunity. And it's going to be that 16-person that sixteen person group for the finals. And I, I'm going to be curious to see how that gets seeded out. Ooh, ooh. So, again, I want to point out that this is the third Ayane that we've seen in the world. Yeah, I So, Ayane is all over the place. Ayane is here. I think it's because Ayane is a pools. She's a pools character. I'm, I'm going to say that until I see an Ayane in top eight. You know Shinlad, what I'm Dre, and uh, CJ. All yeah. Ayane players, literally, you've seen pretty nice much over and over again. Oh, nice low throw. And I love the fact that we just saw that. Like, regardless of your skill level, if you are willing to throw, punish things that are whipped, you are solid. Yeah, I love it. For sure. And again, Shin Lad is no stranger to having pretty good fighting game fundamentals. He doesn't just play this game. He came from another game. So definitely not somebody you want to sleep on. And, you know, Big Dean, I'm not sure how much he's been playing. But, oh, Shin Lad did not mean to drop that combo. Yeah, definitely not. He's going to take some damage for it. That's unsafe. No punish. But he takes the stun anyway. So one thing I'm seeing a lot of players doing, really going for the stun. I mean, for the punish, throw punish. Yep. Because they know that their opponent Ooh. is going to throw out an attack afterwards and get counter hit lost. And that's a dead character, yeah. too. Yeah. my man, T-Rex. T-Rex just tore that car up. <laughs> All right, so Shinlad going up two to nothing in the set here. Looking really convincing. That is actually safe. And Shinlad was just holding block at the ground there. He, he, he over, right? blocked three straight attacks. It was a very interesting choice there. That's unsafe. Beautiful punish by a big game there. That's unsafe. No punish there by Shinlad. He just wanted Shinlad, to get some yeah, space. he just wants to get away. Because he knows that in order to win this matchup, I need to stay away from this guy. He's got me at every angle. He's got me with the 11 frame mid, the 9 frame jab. I can't combat him up close, so why not play him? Why not play the range game and take my yeah, advantage there? And, and the thing is with Big Dame, he your big game, or Big Dame I should say, he he's actually made a nice adjustment to the fact Dead that Shinlad's been running by uh, putting out attacks on the screen that catches his feet, jails him, and then allows him to get some damage on the screen. Ooh. Ooh, nice oh, damage oh, here. Oh, oh. That's big damage actually. Ooh. More big time damage. Okay, so Big Dean in trouble. Shin Lad sitting on a both players sitting on a full bar. I love what he's doing right there. He's like, you know what? That might be unsafe, but I want to take and look, look, he's got he all the advantage space. now. He knows. He and space. this is something you don't see in DOA often. Oh, no punishment, no punishment. He had options to punish each of those times, but he's just he's looking like, for the perfect option. Exactly. Why would I waste my time trying to throw punish you when I have a full life bar and you yeah. have to come to me? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That, those that's are those a, fighting that's game a fundamentals. Frustrating, that's a frustrating opponent to, to have to deal Especially with. Especially fighting Ayane because she's got those great keep out options. Absolutely. All right. All right. So we're going to game two here. Shin Lad sitting on one to nothing. Uh, you know, at this point, I mean, I think he's pretty much a sure shot to win this matchup. I don't think the big game is going to be able to adapt. Maybe with a character change, but I just think Ayane just has the ability to run so well and keep big game out. Well, I mean, if, if he can continue to push Shin Lad towards this wall, I mean, he has a great opportunity to take this round. I mean, because the last thing an Ayane player wants to do is have their back to the wall where their spins are kind yeah. of uh, minimalized. All right, so there's a kick in the head there. Oh, man, and Shin Lad working that stun game. He needed to use the Oh, there's the break hold again. Oh, nice uh -huh. throw. Oh, okay. Oh, he tried to go for the throw. So Shinlad is going to get out of there for sure. Yep, there it is. Both players sitting on less than 20%. That was such a bad whip. Oh, okay. Nice. So that uh, spinning back twirl right there, I, the throw, I think it used to be an offensive hold at some point, but it hasn't been since four, I want to say. Yeah, it hasn't. It hasn't. took it away. Nice, nice punch for there. And I like the choice from Shin Lad. He, he recognizes that, you know, Big Dame is not going to be checking those feet, so it gets the guaranteed damage after the second hit. Mm. 
Oh, what a jump. Yo, this man's moving right now. It's good. Clean, it's good. He's, put, he's putting the Nico attacks off axis and yeah. he's making a whiff completely. That's I mean, going to show you something we don't see a lot in DOA is the free step mechanic. Like, yeah. He's free stepping. Oh, he's dead. He's going to take the guaranteed low throw. Oh, no, he's not. 25, 30% there. Wow, defense. Oh, that's not it's it. not going to kill because it's the five framer. But still, oh my gosh. So Shin Lad was dead. Big Dame Shin is kicking was himself dead. right now. Yeah. Definitely Shin Lad was dead. Nice sidestep. And a round like that can really get in your head if, if you're not careful. Oh, nice, nice. Watch your feet. Nice so sidestep no again. No punishment. Going to go into the egg. What kind of combos do we have here? Drops and he it. Dropped it. Oh, it catches his back. Oh, that wow. was dirty. That was dirty. Drops it.
Yo, what is going on, guys? We are back here at TFC 2019 with some more Dead or Alive 6 World Championship action. I'm Emery Reigns. And this is Shay Swift Eye. And we're going to be jumping into top 16 of TFC. And very quickly, the update we have, you know, we know that in France right now, first place is being fought over yeah. by Caliber Blades and CO. Yep, exactly. And again, you know, there's two events going on right now, and they're both World Championship uh, Series events. So they're yes. both going to be points matches. And uh, as Caliber Blades and Quiggle both went over there respectively to try and gatekeep at the same time and get some points and uh, also some uh, prize money for themselves as well. So yes. um, that's going on so obviously as money. we speak. Yeah, they're definitely getting that prize yeah, money, no question. Okay, so again, we're going to be jumping into top 16 here. Um, I already see on deck that we have MMA boss, or what is he going by now? Is he just boss? Yeah, I mean, he's he's final boss, MMA boss, Nick. I mean, guy's got multiple names, much like Alan Paris, Lucky Loops. But what we do know is these two guys are both from Atlanta. Yeah. Dre on the on the right, or left, I should say, and then MMA boss will be on the left. Right. I think they're actually already playing now, if I'm not right. mistaken. Yep. Okay, so... I button check, never mind. Button yeah, check, no, they're check. definitely doing the button check. Okay, so, again, talk about these players a little bit. I've known Boss since the DOA 4 days. He's been around for a while. So, so um, what's interesting is they play with each other on a regular basis these days. Okay. So, that that's means, to me, it's always a coin flip. And given the fact that, you know, you just recently said Dre is like the number one Yane on the PC right now, which yeah. I didn't even know that. I didn't either. <laughs> and uh, so I'm used know. to him going by Black White Boy, so I didn't even know that he was Dre Max. Right, or whatever right. That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. It's, it's going to be an interesting set, I think, because the way Final Boss likes to play is kind of anti-Ayane, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a sense of, like, Final Boss is not coming to you. Right. He's going to let you try and kill yourself against his defense. Right. And, and these Jan guys Lee's are love both doing that. veteran players. They've been around for years, so. And I, I, I figured, you know, he wasn't going to go lay thing in this matchup because he saw what Drake Ma Dre Masters just did mm -hmm. to, uh, to Black Moon Rising, obviously, earlier in the bracket. So yeah. we're going to see last boss, not final, final boss, last boss. He's a boss nonetheless. So Period. we're going to see Jan Lee, who I think struggles in this matchup for sure. I think so. Oh, nice hold there. And again, that's smart play from Dre. Yeah. He's going to use that meter. No, he's not. He's going to take the damage. What's the setup? And Dragon Gunner was put on the screen. Wasn't whip punished in that situation. Last boss might have gotten away with something in that situation. Ooh, nice punishment there. 6 k on the screen. And that's one thing that Jan Lee players love to do is just sit back, watch you kill yourself, and then try to take the round. But Dre, with quality defense, prevents himself from dying from this first round. Ooh, and again, that 4P. Jan Lee players love to let you walk into their web right. where they can just execute on you. And nice you know, Dragon Jin Lee not being a character that has a bunch of get-in options, but he's definitely got a good keep-out game. And it's actually surprising to see Ayane getting in on Jin Lee. Ooh, what's he got here? Oh, big-time combo coming up. I like it, man. He opted to keep his... Uh, oh, I'm surprised we saw that from him. This is a dead Ayane. Oh, my lord. Yeah, Jin Lee's doing real good damage these days. Like, really good. And I'm just now getting hip to it because I've never known Jan Lee to be a character who does a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, the patch made him good. Like, the patch really improved some of the moves that allowed him to, like, extend his combos and right. really get the true damage he deserves. And again, starting off, it looked as if Dre was going to be running away with this. But last boss, it, oh, that was a fuzzy? Yeah, I mean, last boss, man, he's got it. Like That's unsafe. Yeah, nice, nice punishment. All right, so both players playing neutral right now in a matchup that you would think would favor Ayane. Nice low kick hold there by... Uh, Dre there to stop the pressure. And Dre trying to space him out, gets the hit. Oh, that was not the right Ooh, combo. We right didn't there. want that one. Final right, boss. So there's that gut stun there, and that's a dead character. So even though he loses that round, you saw Final Boss's uh, strategy was get away from the car, which right. you don't see that enough. But from him, it's classic player, classic DOA right there, where you get away from the car, get yourself away from that damage. Right. Nice break hold, needed that situation as well. Ooh. Ooh, nice run up and throw. Good opening. Doesn't get that hit, though. Is he going to finish it? Yeah, that's safe. Yeah, I like what there. So that's actually really crazy. Whenever Jan Lee used to start that back punch string, you knew it was a dead string. Now that he can go into stance oh. off of it, that creates way more opportunities. That is a dead character. I don't agree with the choice there. I think he could have killed him without the meter. He could have. Because Fatal could've. Rush doesn't do much. If he did all that with that, he probably could have just wall spotted him and killed exactly. him. Exactly. I mean, he's building up the meter very quickly, so he's got a chance to really not regret it. But still, same time, man, if, if Final Boss gets a really quality stun into a nice launcher. Yeah, launcher, this is the mix-up. What's he going to get off it? No, oh, no punish punishment. there. Okay, oh, nice. Side and nice again, just there. like that, Dre is back down to no meter. He used that sidestep there. He's getting some damage off that 4P. 
It's a nasty combo. If the first one hits you, it's over. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Nice. What are we going to see? Patience. Wow. Ooh. Wow. And he refused. He refused to get held thrown there. He's got full meter. He's got to put it on the screen. We just don't know when he's going to put it on the screen. Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my God. I cannot believe he just did that. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> Yo. Oh. And again, so... I want to say this. Last boss had that whole entire match. He did. He did, settled. man. He did. And what it, what's funny is Dre knew he's going to use this break blow. He knew it. And he put the right option on the screen. Right. All right. So we're going back in here. Ooh, there it is. Okay, that 4P. The punch. Man, that 4P is hitting everything. Oh, barely misses that. Uh, nice punch over there. there. Nice, Ooh, and there we go. mid kick hold there by Dre. Stop the pressure. Nice 25, 30, almost 30% 30 there on that combo. Quality stuff. And Dre's nice. looking real comfortable in this first round of game two. All right, so Dre closes it out with that standing kick. I think it's 12 frames, I want to say. Yeah. Okay. Not, no punishment. Ooh. 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 Big time Ooh. damage, Ooh. but he didn't that mean to do that combo. He did not mean to do that, not at all. Mm, nice throw punishment here. Oh, mm, nice back I like kick, the, kick. I uh -huh. like it. Uh -huh. Get full damage. Uh -huh. Such good uh -huh. damage. Uh -huh. Wow. I didn't know he could do that one. Yeah, and it's cool because Jin Lee he can just keep did his a dragon. Turn. Yeah. He just tried to do the dragon kick. So I will say one thing. Regardless of the outcome of this match, I guarantee you we're going to see MMA boss get at least one dragon kick. He's known for it. He's known yeah, for just putting a dragon kick on the screen. He's a dragon kick guy, man. Oh, nice defense. Not going to kill. Meter. Oh, Ooh, caught him. He's dead. When you hit a raw break blow, uh, break blow like that, it does so, so much, damage. much damage on normal hit or counter hit, rather. Yeah. No oh, skill. wow. That crushed, huh? Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah. Oh, nice duck there. Where's the punishment? There it is. He's got to get himself away from the wall. Nice defense. And the button choices from nice. Final Boss, I'm a little surprised about because he hasn't really put things on the screen to make that Ray was scared. Sick. I've never seen that before. That was sick. I've never seen the down forward H plus K into the bound, into the close hit. I've never seen that. And right Ooh. now, he's got him. He, that's a that's not a good choice. All the options that Ayane has from that do track after that, that mid punch. Mm. Uh, I think Dre is feeling real comfortable unsafe. right now. All right, that's unsafe. No punish by Dre. Yo, Dre's oh looking Lord. for something. Doesn't oh get God. it. And it looks like Dre is going to close this out. That's unsafe and no punish there. Oh, right? no. That's and dead last character. Boss really trying to use that four punch down kick and it yeah, hasn't he worked just, one he just time got yet. it. He got it in his head. Got in his head. All right, man. So congratulations to my man Dre for moving on in the winner's bracket. Looking yes. good. I think that secured him for top eight winners, I think. I think it does. I want to say so. And I called it, man. I called it. I, I kind of figured we were going to see him just based off of the, uh, the type of plays we see here. And on top of that, just based off of how well he's been playing. He's been playing really well since he Absolutely. got here. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, the, the other interesting thing is um, when we were watching that match, it was just like Nick, final boss, he broke down. Like, yeah. he, he broke down. His offensive pace just went silent. Right. And he started just trying to use some type of 6P, 2K combination. And Dre was like, this is basic. Let me just block this, punish every time. And that was pretty much an end for him. Yeah. Uh, moving on here. He's not out. So, you know, when you're at this point and you're, you know, you're in the top – you know, the top 16 area, and mm -hmm. you, if you do go to lose the bracket, you're not out, and you still have a very good chance. You're not going to lose bracket when the tournament first starts. So if you go to lose bracket now, you still have a chance to be able to make that top eight winners. That's not over yet, but again, you never, it doesn't matter what tournament you're at. Being a loser bracket, you're at a deficit regardless. You're always going to be at some kind of a disadvantage. For sure. And, and very I would quickly. say that Caliber Blades just took the uh, the French tournament we were just talking about. Yeah, no, he did. He, he Caliber Blades is the winner in France uh, yeah. today. So uh, the United States has taken those points. Yeah. <laughs> and first and second, and money. so again, see Logica being in second place. So Japan is going to secure some points for themselves. And as well as uh, as Calibre Blaze, obviously he doesn't need points to qualify, but he's going to walk away with all that prize money. This is the third uh, North American event that he's won. That man, his pockets are looking nice right now. Yes. <laughs> Right, but look at the master we have here at TFC. Cyber, so, Rikudo. You know, you know, the one tournament may be over, but we still have TFC going on right now. And again, these matches that you guys are about to see, once we start getting to that top 16, top 8 range, it's going to be crazy. Cyber going up against Rakuto. Two guys that are definitely, you don't want to sleep on either player. You know, Bayman struggles in this game, but that doesn't mean that you should sleep on him. And I, Lomiji. 
This is a strange pick. For Interesting sure. pick from Rakuto, but I'm not mad at it because Momiji's not a bad character. Right, no, she's not. But Cyber is very, very familiar with Momiji, so I don't know if this is going to be a good pick for this particular matchup. This is the first time that we're going to actually see this character. Ooh! This good is the damage. first time we're going to see this character here. Yeah, I for haven't sure. seen her this weekend yet. That's unsafe, no punish. Ooh! Nice, smart play. You don't want to deal with the mix up. Just put the break ball on the screen, take yep. your round, keep it moving. Good stuff from Cyber. Okay, so Rakuto, you know, sitting on a full bar right now. Cyber not respecting the rest of that string. That's plus. Nice launcher here. It's going to be a normal hit, so there's not going to be too much damage, but still. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay, so, so that's one thing about uh, Momiji. You know, she may not be the strongest in terms of her speed. She may not be the strongest in terms of her damage, but ooh, she will chip away damage. with you, and she gets it pretty easily. That's yes, plus. Absolutely. Nice, nice hold. hold. Classic, there. classic expectation from a Momiji player. They love yeah. that 6-6 six, speed. Six Cyber knew it. Took him, took him out, took the round. Needs one more round to take game one. So I don't want to say that Rakuto, you know, picked Momiji because he wanted, he was sleeping on Cyber, but I think that he picked Momiji because he just doesn't like Bayman in this matchup. But I think that Bayman does pretty well. We saw Virgin nice. Knight go up against Cyber earlier and do pretty well. Oh, and he would have got a guaranteed charge if he would have finished it. Yeah, yeah, that's a weird thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can uh, hold that guaranteed charge, right? No, nah, if you do it off of that throw, it's guaranteed. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep, okay. If you do the full charge, and that's, that's, a dead character. that's a dead character for sure. And I have never seen Rakuto get 3-0 that fast. And Cyber is, like, confident. I've never seen the confidence coming from this man that I'm seeing right Cause, now. Because Cyber knows, Cyber knows, like, Cyber knows that he's a great player. It's just about can he do it at the most critical moments? And this, this is, is one of those bracket. moments. This is yeah. winner's bracket. So, you know, if whoever loses this match, they're going down to lose bracket to have to deal with <laughs> with Virgin Knight. And you're going to have to deal with these other players. But, you know, whoever – and I, I, I called it. I knew we were going to see Bayman. No this question. This is still his best character. Nice break hold. You don't want to deal with that situation, especially on this map with the electric wall. Nice break hold. Again, same thing. Didn't want to deal with the that's situation. Two. And, again, that's Ooh. so important for Cyber to realize uh, – for Rakuto to realize – that move being negative two is huge, and that stops the tank for a while. This is a bad matchup. He's he's gonna die from this almost. No, he's it's not. It's gonna be close though. He's almost dead. Yeah, he's gonna have about five percent left. Nice, nice hold. hold. You need to hold that. Are we and gonna see Cyber six over Kudo at TFC? I don't think so. I, I don't see that happening, especially with the way he's playing Bayman. I mean, that last round was pretty close. Yeah. But I do know that rakuto has got some work to do. For sure. And again, Rakuto recognizes he was still plus there. He's going to get the wall spat. Finally getting something started here. And he's looking for that 2 and one It just doesn't exist in DOA 6. Yeah. So one thing that I think we're going to see Rakuto start doing is pairing after 1PP because Cyber is doing forward punch every single time. Nice yeah. run up and tank roll. Something we saw Cyber ducking every Actually time. Actually saw it. We saw it. Night. Right. Yeah. But you don't expect it from Rakuto style of play. Why he's oh, so effective. Oh, oh, and as you can see, Rakuto yes. is, this is not nice the same Rakuto that we just saw. Uh-huh. In that situation, Cyber Force Rakuto to guess. Made the wow. right read. Another right read right back in this game. Oh! They did the same. They both burned meter. They both burned meter. And I'm pretty sure Cyber is looking to send Rakuto to lose the bracket here at TFC. So one thing about Cyber's play style that you don't see much, he is extremely based on reads. Like, his reads are really great. As you can see, he started Ooh, nice the round. Break. Ooh! Big time damage. What's the setup? Oh, my lord. Sidestep. Oh, nice my hold. lord. Kudo's in trouble is here. Is he going to send Rakuto to lose his bracket? Oh, Ooh, nice hold. What's the setup? Uh -oh. Nice. If Rakuto's got to get some space. He's got to make space. something happen or he's going to losers. There he does. He's going to go to losers bracket. Wait. Stun. And nice he held hold. it. Wow. Wow. What a freaking match. Wow. And just like that, Cyber sends Rakuto to losers bracket here at TFC. Cyber. And you know. Couldn't believe that hold. That hold. So it's, it's moments like crazy. that that yeah. define you as a player. In that situation, you know, we always see, you know, Rakuto, we see Hoodless. That new stun that they added in DOA 5 where the player kind of slumps down a little yep. bit. Uh, you get a guaranteed launch off that if the yep. person doesn't hold it. And Cyber recognized that, went for the mid-punch hold because he knew that if I don't hold, I'm, if I don't hold this, I'm dead. He knew yep. it. He recognized the situation. He got the hold and just sent Rakuto yep. to lose bracket here. That, so. that is what we're talking about when it comes to Cyber. Knows he's a great player. Yeah. 
It's about can you do it in those big moments? Right. And that's a big moment. That's going to be a really, really good confidence builder going into top eight, right. going into top four if possible, going into the grand finals if possible. Yeah. You need that moment. You need those moments to know that you can beat the best of the best. Right. And I think that we just saw uh, him go to winners. Uh, top eight winners, I believe, off of that. Top, yes. That was top 16 winners. So yeah. I think we just saw Definitely. him go to top eight winners. That is impressive. Yes. Okay, so we're going to be moving on again in the winner's bracket here, I believe. No, we see Matt Potton. So Matt Potton did secure himself for top uh, top 16 losers, I think. Because who do we see him play against that he lost to? Uh, Matt Potton lost to CJ, or did he beat? No, he beat him. He yeah, should he be in beat, winners. He beat CJ. He should right, be in top 16 that. winners because that. that was his last match that he played, so, and he ended up going against uh, CJ, getting the F5 in the corner and throwing him into the wall. That's right. So that's what happened. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, man. Okay. So we're going to be moving on here again. That last match was was pretty good, man. I, honestly, like I, it could have went either way. Uh, I think that the way Cyber was playing very heavily based on reads and just throwing stuff out there, that that's what benefited him in that matchup, and Rakuto was not ready for it. Yeah, no question. Yeah. All right. Again, guys, you're watching TFC 2019, and um, you know so far there's been some pretty great matches. Once we get to that top eight range, you're going to see literally – Probably upsets, but you're going to see a lot of really close matches. Again, I want to remind you guys, Killy is here, and we haven't seen him on stream yet. I don't think we've seen him on stream play one time yet, so Killy is kind of like an undercover killer at this point because I'm pretty sure he's in winner's bracket still wherever he is. Yeah, I mean, so. wherever he is, we know that Killy's doing work, and yeah. he's not been sent to lose exactly. his bracket. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we do know that B-Boy Dragon versus Matt Ponton is a match that we've seen in the past, and it is a match that we expect to be very exciting right. So for top eight. Just based off of what I've seen from these players, um, Anytime that Matt goes up against a character who's faster, you know, obviously he's going to be going up against Nico or Kula in this matchup where they both had that 11 frame, mid 9 frame jab. I think we're going to see uh, Matt pull out Mai to start with. And if he has to, he's going to pull out uh, Kula. Or I think he's going to pull out Bass if he actually comes down to the limits. We'll see what happens, though. All right. So I think we're going to see my against Nico. I would hope so. Yeah. We'll see though. My versus Nico. I don't I don't again. like Matt picking uh Bass versus Nico. Not to not, start. Not for how he plays Bass. Right. Not I don't like the way he I don't like the, the character matchup to start off with. If you want to go out with your guns, I respect it. But I don't like him starting with Bass in this matchup because both of his characters have the ability to do well. So start off with what you can. Start off with a character that has that speed, and maybe you can make it happen. If you got to go to Bass, go to Bass. Yep. All right, so, you know, I'm not really sure I've ever seen B-Boy, at least in the last four to five years, play a set without those headphones on. <laughs> I think he's had those same headphones on for the past five, six years he's been playing. And they're like just trading right into it, too. like a trademark. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the B-Boy way right there. Yeah. All right, so we're jumping into it. I don't know button check. And, of course, just like I called it, we're going to see Mai against Nico with the ninja costume one. All right, so Matt getting some pressure started. Here's the bound. Goes for the combo. God, it's going to hurt. There's the egg, too. Perfect, perfect lining him up with that egg there. Does he got those? He does. Dead. Yeah, and that's a strong play from, from B-Boy there. Very right, strong. B-Boy taking the first round, and he's while Matt has no meter really at all, B-Boy sitting on a full bar, got a first round on the board there. Is he going to get stuff. the danger zone? He is. Yep, there it is. All right, so B-Boy is going to be hurting when he stands back up from this, losing about 40% of his life bar to Matt there. Ooh. Shout to counter the fan. Really risky to do that. If you're going to try to combat the fan, I would definitely try to crouch or free step it. I would not try to hold it. Agreed. Sometimes it'll catch you on the recovery and hit you. Agreed. Oh, nice, nice. break hold. And I like the choice from Matt. He's not afraid to use meter as much when he's playing as Mai, especially against his character. Oh, nice. Nice evasion of the wake up kick. And B-Boy picking the right choices when Matt's free canceling, right. which is resulting in some nice damage each each time he changes. Nice breathing. Nice interruption of that wake-up kick. That kick. You know why that kick works really well like that is because of the active frames. Yes. And it's like three moves in one. Like, it's crazy. 
Ooh, high counter throw. What's the setup here? He wants to take the mix up instead. Uh, 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 uh. Egg. There and it is. And he knew. Wow. Max so damage. I'm trying to figure why B Boy wouldn't finish it when he gets that uh, the high counter throw there, but he wanted to go for that because he knew that he was going to get the danger zone. That's unsafe in this game. But that, yeah, that, nice was break that was safe. That was safe. Oh, nice sidestep. And that could have been a dangerous situation for Matt if it had Ooh. beaten out the wake-up kick. But he was able to get through, get some damage. He needs some space here. Oh! Nice hold! What a hold. That was crazy. What a hold. So All Matt, right. Matt's got that, that scientist face right yeah. now. I think that... Going to character select. Based off of what I know about B-Boy, because I've played B-Boy multiple times in the tournament, I think Bass would work very well. I All of so. these players look so tired today. Yeah. I and mean, dude, some of these guys took a journey. They took a voyage. Matt drove... Uh, I believe he had an eight-hour drive from Maryland. So yeah, he no, had a trip, no question. Man, for sure. No question. And you know, he, again, he set up all the PCs yeah, and set everything. Up all the PCs. So if it wasn't for Matt being here and taking that drive for the community, we would not be playing on PCs right now. No. So it's really, really awesome that we have somebody as dedicated as Matt that's going to drive eight hours to bring us these PCs. So uh, again, we're jumping in the same map, actually. And again, I called it. We're going to see Bass with the, the United with the USA uh, bandana on with a ninja costume. <laughs> And even though, you know, Mai may be faster in the matchup, I still think that this is Matt's most comfortable character. I like it. Let's save. All right. Gets the launcher there. That's safe. I don't know if it's safe against Bass, though, but it's safe. Get ready. So, you know, one thing that I'm seeing Matt doing a lot, Matt is uh, Matt is not really starting the, the round using too many attacks yep. because he knows that Nico is going to out-prioritize him because of her speed. But yep. we see Matt hitting buttons in the right places, and he's going to go for that break throw. Turn in gold. Get over there into the wall. That's not going to feel good Oh, my gosh. You see the amount of damage that was on there right there? That's unsafe. Nice, nice punish by Matt. Close and Matt, up. up two rounds to zero on people in game yeah. two. There's that 1P. Nice sidestep. No meter there. Empty step. Good right, stuff. So this nice punch, punch, grab. See B -boy go for the reset. Uh -huh. Nice quick launch. Oh, Drops it. Heavyweight. Reset. Ooh, nice finishing of the string. And that's a case of Bass being a slower character, so Matt has to make his choices sooner. Wow. That's a dead character, I believe. No, he's not going to use the meter because he knows. Even if he were to run that round, he has so much work to make up. That's yeah. it. But he still, still, he takes the round. He's got the full meter. Matt's working on his third bar now. Unfortunately, these these tracking attacks are really working in B-Boy's favor, but Matt misses the pickup there. I'm surprised he didn't go for the 4 4 people's K. Yeah. That automatically keeps you in their face. Nice hold from Matt there. Nice, the nice pickup. What's going to be the setup here? Nice. Wow. And, and Matt, uh -huh. smart play. He went for the option that could beat out the uh, wow. break blow. So I'm not sure what... B-Boy tried to do right there. That down back kick punch is not a 2-1 on normal hit. It's not. And he got hit not. by the high. I don't know what the heck he tried to it's, do right it's there. An, it's an interesting series that, that just played out there. And I think yeah. when we go into this next match, Matt, he's going to have to change up his setups on the pickup because he can't be throwing out throws because it looks right. like B-Boy's going to be looking out for that. All right, so again, this is 1-1 one one in top 16 winners. Whoever wins this next game here is going to decide who's going to top 8 winners. Oh, uh -huh. nice. Uh -huh. uh -huh. B-Boy, nice hold. great hold. Needed that situation. Nice. B boy again, once again, that pressure when he's got you against the wall. He's so good at making sure he gets that final hit. Oh. Wow. And this could, this. Oh my gosh, if he had gone for the throw. Wow. Man. And, and this and Matt got ahead of himself. Got ahead of himself. We've been seeing that so much. We've been seeing these players. Nice hole. Whiffing break blows all day. It's something about that spacing that's just got him, got him a little off right now. Mm, I like it. Is he it. gonna get the roof here? Uh huh. Oh, he was just away from it. He almost got the roof there. That's negative. Nice, nice side step. That, that should character. kill. Uh -huh. Grace. Get ready. So Matt nice here ties it up. Old. Both these guys looking at one to one. This is winner side too. Quick launch from B Boy. Gets some damage on the screen. Takes about twenty two percent. And Matt, very patient, very patient through the string. Matt
lose bracket. I'm pretty sure Rakuto knows that even though I just won this, I'm still in losers. I'm not in top eight, and I still have a lot to do before I can get to top eight. He knows yes. that. Who else is waiting for him down there? Uh, final boss. Oh, man, final boss. And I and do believe Jan Lee does well against Bayman in this game. If I'm not mistaken, I think our top eight is so far we've got Dre, Killy, Cyber, Matt Ponton. Matt Ponton, yeah. Winner so that's side. Our, that's our winner side, right? Kudo, the winner of this match is final boss and somebody I think. Right. And then two others. Right. All right, we're so we'll moving see. on again here at TFC. We have, so I don't know her new name. We have MMA Boss, but I'm familiar with this player from Xbox. Uh, I don't know her new name because I think she switched it, but she used to go by Linus on Xbox. I don't know if, if she was at a clan or something, but she we'll used see. to go by Linus. I don't know what her name is now, but she is definitely not somebody you want to sleep on. She's pretty damn good. So, Nick, he's here. MMA Boss, one match away from collecting payment. Right. Okay. One match. So what does that got to feel like? Let's see. I don't know. Let's see if he can bring this out. So uh, I know Line is to be um, a Kasumi player at one point, but I think she switched over to uh, Helena. But okay. this is obviously a button check. Are we going to see Lei Feng from Last Balls, or are we going to see uh, Jan Lee, his uh, known Jan Lee? I don't know. But I, I, what I do know and what I expect to see is a good match between right. these two. Oh, yeah, this, sure. is, this is to get into top eight. We are seeing Jan Lee. That is a tough match for this man against this character. But listen, you got to go within with your guns blazing. Exactly. Can't be scared of a character matchup. So we're going to see Jan Lee, and we're going to see Helena. I do believe that Helena struggles slightly in this matchup, but then again, I don't know because the Boko Ho is going to go under the forward punch. Yeah. Oh, what? He didn't press any buttons. That was the longest for... taunt I've ever seen after. Right? <laughs> it's Jan Lee. Like, and again, he's going with that 6P <laughs> low kick, man. <laughs> Jan Lee. Dude, it's actually funny. You can see his mouth when he goes, ooh. You can see his mouth, and it matches up perfectly. I've never noticed that. Wow, and there's the dragon, dragon kick. kick That's what we about. expected. That's, he loves his dragon kicks, man. And one thing, oh, wow, oh, crushes Lord. highs. Smart play. Great damage, Save. too. Wow, he's a button, though. Like risk negative three? Yeah. 4-4 four, four kick. I think 4-4 four, four kick and 4 punch kick are different, or maybe they're not. I'm not sure. But they're both super safe, though. They've always been safe. So, so you said Lioness, but the name looks like it's Versace Vers Vampire Versace X, which is Vampire. pretty dope. I like okay. it. But as I say that, Versace got to do, some, do, some, right do something different with this kick I think we're going to see her adjust real quick. I think she's, she's looking at it like, okay, I need to go into Boko, which we just saw. Yeah, no question. No question. Nice punish. Neutral throw. All right, catch him hitting a button. There's, there's some pressure there. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Nice back. That back punch is going to help him a lot in this matchup, especially when she's negative because she can't hit a button. Y yeah, for sure. Nice, nice, nice. And this is just last boss kind of going in. Just negative. A little bit. Surprised he did a hold there, but let's see what kind of combo he's going to come up with against. Mm. 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 Looking for oh, that reset. Oh, that was mm. dirty. Mm. Was a close Get that hit. good damage. He wants a 6-6-K. Six, six Nice. Okay, she's gonna get something started here. Oh, oh she didn't want to do that. that. I don't combo. think she would do that. And that's it. And that's a bold thing to do, man. It is, like for somebody sure. that's that far away from you, you just flip off the ground and throw out that mid punch. Like it feels a little disrespectful. Right. I need Versace to come back with some hands. I think we're gonna see her adjust just a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna be enough to win because again, Boss is a veteran player. He knows. What Locking low and punishing that that yeah. low string. So and that's something really, that Dre was doing a lot. Exactly, and it's really letting Boss get into the flow of his offense. Catches him holding there, going back into Bogo. So as you can see, Boss is abusing that back punch because he knows that it's a true mm. man, and he so knows it's going to make her stance. That's negative. But uh, he has enough space to get back away there. He's going to do it again. There it is. That's safe. And there it is. Dead oh, character. Back punch, man. Quality back three and punch. one. Yeah. That is a Jan Lee staple since DOA four. It still works. Oh, way to see the free cancel and throw that. Doesn't see the second time. Mm. Damage coming up. That picked her all way. Look at the damage on that. Dude is good, man. He's good these days. Man, oh. Jen Lee looking kind of good in this game, bro. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know what? In fact, this might be the first time if he were to win this, it would be the first time we saw Jan Lee in top eight ever. Yeah, it's, dude. Jin Lee is that character that has never, except for when DOA Vanilla first got because he was broken. Yep. But Jin Lee is that character who we've never seen be like, yo, this character is dumb. Like, he's looking pretty good right now. Yeah, no question. He's making Jan Lee look really solid. Versace needs to get some pressure, though. I don't and think we've crushed. seen Versace take a round yet on balls. Ah, oh, man, that was so risky. 
I I think we're gonna see something here. Hitting buttons. Boom. Finally a close Use that meter? No. Oh, plus. Surprise. It's unsafe. Nice. And he catches him on that free hold. So she's catching him doing unsafe moves and holding after him. And it's costing him for sure. There's the lift stun. Uh, Boko, and I think uh, last uh, boss uh, is a little rattled. Uh, He's trying uh, to end okay. the game, but Versace keeping in it. Wow, she is catching this man on buttons right now. Ooh. And boss is getting hit by everything. Everything. Ooh. Everything. Wow. Okay. Okay. We on the screen. Versace trying to put Two these rounds. hands on this man right now. That's safe. Oh, catches him. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Boss is on buttons. Sure is. Boss on buttons right Versace now. Versace on buttons, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, whip punishment. Smart play. Runs up with the 6 XP. Dangerous stuff. Okay. And he backs away. So, Boss trying to play a little bit smarter here. Oh, Does man. not want Catch this to go to a buttons. third game. Oh, man. And it's nice. Mm, she needed nice to use that. And that's Ooh, almost a dead character. Not almost, it almost. yet, but Boss. Looking Try to cheese her out, though. There's the I'm punish. I'm surprised what we just saw from Boss, because this is going to put him in a bad place. And oh, it. takes it. So Thought a free cancel. I like what she tried to do. She tried to run up to him and, you know, mix him up with some of her strikes with the 3P. Yep. Unfortunately, she turned her back to him. and that come, You don't. You really don't want to turn your back against a character as the fast. Free cancel is too long. Yeah. I mean, you want to do it not. in stun, but not on against block. But nonetheless, that was a really good showing from Versace uh, doing a really good job. Almost getting top eight. And uh, I believe this is one of her first majors. I think she went to a, a couple back in the day in five. But I haven't seen her in six months. So really good job to her coming out. Yeah. And almost look eliminating at him. boss. Look, 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 look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Coming over here about to punch his ticket. This man about boss to punch is ticket. himself right now. He's like, I get to losers. sign this for money today. Yeah, man. All right. <laughs> All right. So we're moving on here again. Moving along in the loose bracket. Our top eight winners is decided, correct? Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Top eight is not. Oh, yeah. Top eight winners decided. Yeah. This is okay. top eight losers. You're yeah. right. You're right. 100%. Okay. So we're going to be moving on here again, trying to decide who our top eight losers are. Um, and we just seen MMA boss, or last boss, uh, confirm his spot for top eight losers right there. No doubt. No doubt. I, is Black Moon still in? He's up playing. Oh, yeah. Black Moon's still in. This is losers bracket. Oh, man. So we seen Black Moon take a loss to uh, uh, an Ayane player earlier, losing to mm -hmm. Dre. Yeah. Who is sitting comfortably in top eight winners right now. And we know that Jai Kotu saw the match. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see Jai Kotu go with Ayane and try to cheese this man out with the matchup. I think that's what we're going to see. And I'm not going to put it past him because we saw him do very well against Killy in the same matchup. Agreed. All right, so both players setting up their buttons right now, and that's why we've been seeing a lot less. Oh, I want to point this out. They're both from North Carolina, by the way. Um, I see players not doing as many button checks now because you have that new feature where you can set your buttons up in the uh, character select screen. Let's see. Negative seven. Try to throw it, though. Yeah, that's going to hurt 50% easy. Mm, half life. Nice defense. And Black Moon Rising, like, I can't say it enough, man. He's such a solid player. Yeah. Like, you just see solidness from him. And it's not just about, like, the fundamentals. It's what? just the fact that he's not making mistakes, man. It's very hard to open it up. Nice. Nice ducking. He's going to take that launcher. Can't get it. Nice hold from him. Ooh, but still. Wow, still. Nice. Punishment. Again. And right away, it looks like Black Moon had enough time to ponder in his law to Ayane. And he is not trying to lose his character twice in the same tournament. Not at all. Right. Ooh, 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 ooh. Nice combo here. Let me get some decent damage from a normal hit style combo. So what Jaikotu is doing is going to hurt Black Moon for sure. Because Jaikotu gets his damage and does what he's supposed to do, which is run away. Yeah, in theory it should. In theory it should. But we've seen just Black Moon run up with semi-safe attacks and try and, and, try and uh, open up the opponent. I think that's what we're going to see a lot from Black Moon. Again, the semi-safe attacks, try and do something with something and then try and get in there with a nice parry or a crushing attack of some sort. Nice. Or or a catch throw. Oh! Ooh. And that kick beat out <laughs> a break blow. <laughs> I love that kick, man. I do. Oh. See, that's not death because it doesn't wall splat. Now he's dead. Smart and took choice. his meter with him. Oh Smart my choice God. from Jakoto. And you unfortunately, if he wouldn't have teched up right there, that never would have happened. Right. Oh, nice sidestep. No em empty sidestep, though, and he's not going to get the bound there. Nice sidestep from Shikoto. Gets the stun. Not able to convert. Gets himself launched instead. And Black Moon Rising pushing him towards the wall, taking him down in life. Nice exchange there. Shikoto with the throw. They're about even on life right now. Ooh, oh, nice. That's Whip a classic. Punishment. Run up that's a dead character. Literally, what we just saw is the classic. Yes. That is the classic. Sweep offensive forward, run up offensive forward. 
And what we did see from Jakoto right there was any throw punishment, he went for strike punishment. That'll be important to pay attention to going forward. But uh, we just saw there, he did some throw punishment, which is good. It's good. Mm. And again, Black Moon Rising wow. really using that 7k on wake up. If he doesn't break oh this, it's going to hurt gosh, that damage. That's, One that's more hit is going to do oh, it. Oh, we caught him pressing though. buttons. Caught him. But even so, like, he's got some work to do. Black Moon still has about 35% left. Yeah. Open space. Black Moon kind of wants to get in there. You can tell from the movement, but Black Moon just looking to whiff him out, and he does. All right. So Black Moon, you know, it wasn't. I wouldn't call it convincing because you know Jakoto was fighting back there, but unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to take Black the Moon out. The stage, the stage was really helpful for Jakoto, and right. this stage won't be as forgiving. All right. So we're more of a close-up mm -hmm. stage here, and Lei Feng is going to dominate on the stage. If the matchup was played correctly, Lei Feng has all the advantage here. Mm. Oh, oh my gosh, what a mix up. Oh, oh, oh. Big time damage. Oh. Look at that. And Black Moon set all of that Ooh, up. What Ooh, interesting choices. Odd things, but Black Moon takes round one of game two. That's unsafe. No punish. And Black Moon trying to hit a button after that. That was really weird. That's negative seven. And he's going to run up offensive fold. No, run up 3P into the new sweep tracking. Uh, uh, get on the ground. Oh my gosh. Nice throw there by Black Moon Rising. Man, if I had a dollar for every time that hit, yeah. I wouldn't even be here right what? now. What? He wouldn't just need did a money. parry against his break blow. <laughs> Lord, look Smart at play. that, man. And just like that, Black Moon Rising is trying to eliminate Jaikotu. No punish again, and he's letting Black Moon do whatever he wants. Pretty much. And Black Moon sitting on full meter. A lot of empty side steps from Jaikotu, which I like the strategy, but at the end of the day, didn't quite catch payoff for him, and he's taking some damage for it. Oh, setups. Nice setup. I like what we're seeing from Black Moon, man. Uh, get kicked in the head. Give me that extra damage because of You can tell he's been in a lap with his character. Oh, wow. dude, what, what kind of hitbox is that? Because it's it's one of the best hitboxes in the game. That's all I'm going to say. Dude, he wasn't even anywhere near. Well, Ayane extended her hurt box, so I guess that makes sense. But Okay. Oh, that's, that's a dead, dead game. Oh, oh, almost. And again, what we just saw is Jack to pretty much kill himself because I don't think he's going to get this round. I don't know. We're going to see. We're going to see. All he needs is one down punch, one standing punch. Wow. What defense from Black Moon. Man, you know, and it was a good attempt by Jakotu, but what ultimately killed him was him getting the life lead and running full screen up to him when he was Ayane and he had the life lead and there was no reason for him to run at that point and that 100% cost him. Absolutely. Sure. Definitely. Completely agree with that. Yeah, man. So we are going to see Jakotu go home. Yeah, unfortunately. Right outside of top home. eight. But he did Black a great Moon job, Rising. Man. Making that top eight. Right. And again, we see Black Moon coming up, signing the book, so that's confirmation. Mm -hmm. These guys going to top eight losers. So our top eight is looking pretty damn good right now. We're going to have Virgin Knight or Virtuous Knight setting up. I don't know who his opponent is, but, um, you know, Bayman, <sighs> Bayman is just not really doing well at this tournament. We've seen uh, Rakuto. Who is his opponent that he just uh, sent to lose right? Or eliminated because there was a losing match. Rakuto fought. I don't remember who he fought. But regardless, so he, he just played his match. It was a, a Yane player, right? CJ. He went mm -hmm. up against CJ, and CJ almost took him out. So, you know, Bayman is trying to hang on by a B-Boy right now. We That's got B -Boy who we coming got. up against uh, Virtuous Knight here, okay? Yeah. So, you know, we're moving, moving slowly through the loser bracket here, but we still have to have Rakuto make it confirm, uh, confirm himself for top eight losers. I don't think he's in there yet. No, he's not. And I think the winner of this is going to fight Rakuto. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to see. Okay. All right, man, we got a couple matches in store for you guys. It's going to be pretty hype. So, you know, again, talking about Rakuto a little more, I mean, he's he's one of those players that are on the leaderboard that need every point that they can get in order to go to Japan at this point. He needs every point he can get. And unfortunately, if he does not win his next match, he might not be able to go. Yes. That's what it's looking like. ECT is there, but he needs this. This is what he needs for sure to really confirm his spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. We're gonna see, man. We're gonna see. And Alan Pear is kind of sitting on the sidelines right now. Not, I can tell that man's not happy. <laughs> you can tell. I, I mean, there's no, no question, man. No question. You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell. Man is not feeling himself right now. All right. So Bayman versus Nico, a matchup we've seen time and time and time again, but not really with these players. So, um, you know, I don't know. B Boy has been playing the game for a long time, and he's got that massive experience to go against Bayman. But does he know how to fight Virtuous Knight's game, man, is the question. Agreed. 
Alrighty, man. So are they doing a button check? Their characters are right. They're doing a button check. Yeah, no? Yeah, button check. Okay. And, uh, you know, thank God it's the button check because this would have been a really great thing for Nico. Because <laughs> she has uh, access to that ground so much more than they may Oh, nice sweep. I think they're ready to start. I think so. A costume pack that I really haven't seen too much is definitely the pirate one. Uh, we really haven't seen it too, too much in tournaments, especially not since the ninja costumes. Yeah, no. Nah, they kind of took Ninjas over. came out and it was over. Yeah. That was honestly when I seen that they announced that pack, I was so happy because that was my favorite. Hayate got his ninja costume back from five, and that was my that was my costume. So I'm happy he brought that back. Yeah. Cool. I yeah. mean, even Bayman looks great as a ninja. Yeah. So we will see. We will see how this one plays out. I mean, who do you got in this match? Uh, I think B Boy's gonna take it and secure his spot for top eight if he can beat Rokuto. I think that's what's gonna happen. But we'll see. And if B Boy does win this, he's gotta fight two Baymans back to back. So he's got his work cut out for him right now. But Definitely. I don't know. Ooh, that's guaranteed because of the slip stun. Sweep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Like it. Ooh. Give me that neck. Ooh. That's a dead character. He's dead. Yep, there it is. Alrighty. Moving on here. B-Boy up a game to nothing against Virtuous Knight. Virtuous Knight getting the stun there. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Right, he's going to get this guaranteed damage if B-Boy doesn't break it. And there is a break. Okay. Ooh, nice damage. Play, yeah. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Nice low hold there. I wonder if he low held the string or if he was just low counter in general. And what's gonna be set up here? We've seen B-Boy with multiple setups. Ah, Smart play. He should get that. Him, that's it, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. It looked like Virtuous Knight was gonna take that round, but he wasn't able to capitalize. But Looking at the screen, Virtuous Knight nice sitting on a full bar right now. He could make something happen right now. Yeah, I mean, if he's able to actually get an attack on the screen and beat out the speed of Nico, he could definitely set up some offense. It's just about, can he do it? So far, so good in round right, three. It's okay, I like it. Oh, he could have done I don't so know why much he didn't damage. Do that, but he didn't. But it's okay. He takes it. He still gets good damage. Oh, he hit him right out of that, too. Interesting. Nice Both lip stun. players looking gold right now. <laughs> Battle of the Goldens. Ooh. Wow, and he, he thought B-Boy was going to hold. Yeah, he's and dead, in that situation, B-Boy's not holding that. Really? He's, not, he's not willing to do that sort of thing. He doesn't want to get himself killed in that situation. So B-Boy takes that. All right, moving on. Again, this is a first 2-2 before top eight. Everything before top eight is always going to be a first 2-2. Two -two. So are we going to see... Uh, B-Boy Dragon close this out and go fight Rakuto uh, to make top eight losers. We're going to see what happens, man. Yeah. I mean, that is that is the, the million-dollar question right now. Nice. Nice, Perry. And again, you know, Virgin Knight is not somebody you want to sleep on. I think Virgin Knight uh, has the ability to beat B-Boy, but it's just a matter of whether he can do it or not. That's the question. And again, Virtuous Knight putting that good damage on the screen. And he is not taking any chances, just finishing out the break blow, taking the guaranteed damage. He could have run up and done a down throw, chose not to. Nice high counter hold. And he's got himself in a great position to take this round and go up to zero. Can he hold on is the question. Black boy, B-boy, he is not playing around. Oh, he's dead isn't even a word. He was super dead. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was rough. So, B-Boy is like, come over here, and that definitely just calls to them because this is going to hurt. Whoa, whoa. Mm. 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 Good stuff. That was Didn't the most unorthodox things I've ever seen, but it yeah. did 60%. That is doing damage. And B-Boy, like, you got to work really hard to train B-Boy because he got up pressing buttons again anyways. Nice hold. Close out the round. 2-1, Virtuous Knight. Oh, he kind of telegraphed that he's going to do a crush there, but B-Boy still threw out a high, got punished for it. Wow, nice reactions there by B-Boy on the tank roll. 
Oh, what's the setup? What's the setup? Nothing here. Okay, okay, I like it. Wasn't able to capitalize. Watch out for the wake-up kick here. What's going to be the situation? Nice. Ooh, catches B-Boy. And I'm surprised that we're seeing this. So right now we're one exchange away from Virtuous Knight making this go to game three. Oh, wow. Great choice. Great choice from Virtuous Knight. So, so again, tied 1-1. One, one. Right. And again, you know, B-Boy and Virtuous Knight both are on the brink of being eliminated here. And yes. you, you don't want to go home here. You made it two matches, this one including another one, away from top eight losers. You don't want to go here. You want to go not. out fighting against Rakuda. That's what you want to do. So we're going to see who can do it. That's safe. So one thing we haven't seen from B-Boy, we haven't seen that relentless pressure that Nico has the ability to put on Bayman because he's such a slow character. Ooh. And nice pressure from Virtual Knight. I think Virtual Knight might have a chance to actually knock out B-Boy. Yeah. But as I say that, that damage. If he can get it, he got it. I'm not sure what B-Boy was fishing for there on that low counter. Ooh, nice again. Nice sidestep from B-Boy. Again, the tank roll is really, really starting to mess up B-Boy. Nice parry. Nice. Catch some step. And that was so good. Smart Tell you, man, play don't count Virtual Knight. Knight out, man. This guy is good, dude. He's got to get away from that wall. Oh, wait. That's this time, the, he, this time, 